Hey, everybody, how's it going? <laughs> I saw that, Sarah. And remember, we can't say the F word in the first 20 no, seconds. we can't. Just wait 20 seconds, and then you can curse away. Hi, everybody. Uh, as you can see, my players are absolutely just trolling the heck out of me. See how I said heck? Heck? Because it's not 20 seconds yet? I just got to wait. I just got to wait. Where are you? Okay, YouTube. Has my 20 seconds expired yet? I set a timer? Uh, I'm looking at it. I, I have an like, internet troll. I'm waiting for the 20 second mark at five, four, three, two, one. Uh, Fuck, Sarah. Happy New Year. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, all joking aside, folks, um, you may notice a certain timbre of my voice being uh, super sexy uh, and uh, in a world. Um, that's because I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a cold, uh, but yet the world soldiers on without me. Hey, well, that's life. You get a cold, but you we just can't. move on. You can't get it through the internet. Or can't you? No, I said we can't soldier. I meant we can't soldier on without you. I oh, to be nice. oh, that's so kind. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, see, I can be nice. You can sometimes when you try. When I feel like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, we have the inimitable, fearsome foursome of Olson, Novak, Fenna, and Percival here. Um, in uh, session four, session four. My God, what is wrong with my voice? Session four of. I just have to make the make the treble go a little bit lower than I normally would. The session four of Electric Dreams from our friends at Free League Blade Runner, the role playing game. Um, I'm ready to get this party started. Are you guys ready? Always here for it. Oh yeah, let's, let's go. do it. All right, cool. Let's see what Shoot happened. Some corporate executives. I mean, if you really want to go that way, that's fine. Uh, currently, awesome. it is day two, uh, and you're heading into the night shift. Night shift. Um, under Looking direct shift. orders from uh, the RDU, you have actually been investigating the disappearance of Blade Runner Leia and the death of her partner, Sandor, both replicants. Uh, through the last day and a half, you've been getting closer and uh, you've been under increasing pressure knowing that the Wallace Corporation is heavily invested in making sure that your investigation doesn't impede the rollout of their Nexus 9 units. It, during the past, say, 12 hours or so, Olsen uh, followed up on a lead to check out the pawn shop owner, Doc Badger, where she learned that Leia asked him to make a stelling scan of her memory implants to get a hard copy printout picture of a young girl who she said was her daughter. Strange, considering that replicants cannot replicate. Meanwhile, Percival headed to the LA Central Library to search for the poems of William Blake, specifically for the missing page from the book found in Leia's apartment. He found a strange and intriguing poem, somewhat of a, a comfort piece as you discerned it, although it spoke of a depressing and fearful life on this planet that we live on, planet Earth. Fena joined Novak at LAPD headquarters and found that there was a hostage situation down in lockup. Styles' arrest the night before ended in a tense standoff, which Novak, which Novak defused, and then sat down to interrogate the hulk, uh, hulking replicant. Styles spoke about the night at the snake pit and how Leia seemed very concerned with something after killing her own partner. It seems that Styles knew Leia after all. That Leia and Styles were part of an organization called the Replicant Underground that aimed to ferry replicants like her and like him potentially off planet. After her killing of her partner, Styles admitted that Leia took a metro cab to Animoid Alley, where she seems to have met with the Aurelian, a mysterious figure that you interviewed before, and then spent the knife at a safe house. Styles said that the Aurelian is still at that safe house, and 
that he told Leia that she should stay hidden until it was time to go to the sign in the Kipple, which you realized is the old Hollywood sign, now dilapidated and overgrown. Thinking that Leia was still there, however, Novak convinced Styles to lead both him and Fenna to the safe house that afternoon. Once there, they found the Aurelian, who told them that it was too late to catch Leia. She had already left, and in a hurry. On a nearby table, the two of you saw a leaflet for the off-world colony Arcadia, an old postcard with the Hollywood sign on Mount Lee. Which made sense. According to the Aurelian, a moon bus would arrive tomorrow morning and, ex and extricate the replicants off-world. On the coffee table, you also saw a copy of Synth Magazine, in which Lilith Tyrell, daughter of Elden Tyrell, stated that she used traumatic memories to control replicants. And it seems that Leia might have gone to the Tyrell Memory Lab, and that it might be time for you to visit her. As you stepped outside, however, you were ambushed by a group of paramilitary dressed in variants of the old Tyrell Corp uniforms. Firing back, you managed to down all but one of them, who escaped in a nearby spinner after launching a set of missiles at a pursuing spinner driven by Percival. The spinner exploded and Percival set aflame, jumped from the demolished spinner, landing in a tangled heap on the ground. But synthetics, or I should say replicants, are very hard to kill. And his smoking body, although burned and bruised, has remained intact. Now, it is the night of the second day of your investigations, Blade Runners. And although most of you need a little downtime, you've decided to go and meet with Lilith Tyrell. And that's where we begin. Night. So... I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my regularly scheduled break from my voice because God knows I need it. I have some tea, and tell me what it is that you guys want to do. What time is it right now? I'd say it's probably just after dusk. So evening shift, not night shift. No, this is the beginning of your night shift. You haven't okay. started night shift yet. Got it. So just in between the... Then, uh... <clears throat> <coughs> After uh, helping extricate Percival from the flaming spinner, kind of looks around and takes stock of the situation and says, well, this does complicate things a little bit, but... Tells me we need to be smart about what we do next, and maybe busting through the door of Lilith right now is <sighs> I don't know. Should we go patch ourselves up, make our reports, and then meet up early in the morning, <clears throat> hopefully before the bus gets here and go to Lilith? Do that then then we miss uh miss some of the replicants taking off in the morning but well we do but or don't we we just know it's coming in the morning we don't know how early i'd rather just go there and stake it out and tag with it i'd rather just go yeah if i don't want to miss i have questions for lilith I mean, Percy, you sure you're up to it? She says, looking down at, like, the smolder marks on his uniform. As long as I'm not driving. You're definitely not driving. <clears throat> All right, let's do things the stupid way. Only live once, right? Novak is going to... I'd like to inspect some of the armor of the, the soldier that attacked us. Uh, are there enough identifying markers <clears throat> regarding the, the Tyrell of it all that I could send photos and be like in pursuit, can't stop back at the office, here's a bunch of photo evidence that corporations are getting involved with bullets. I mean, you guys did call for backup from dispatch. So yeah, after a certain amount of time, more LAPD spinners do end up landing 
um, right. Yeah, that's right. In that's the right. area, um, it's been a month. So they, you know, they they cordon off the area. They make sure that you know no, um, uh, n- no civilians are there are around in order for the investigation to begin. So if you want to take a like a better look, you're more than welcome to at these uh, at these yeah, guys who, like who jumped you. I'd like to. Yeah, I'll let you know without you having to make a roll. It's fine. Um, okay. The, the armor style is specifically Tyrell esque militia. Um, it's, something, it's not exactly the same, though, right? Because this was 20 years ago or thereabouts. A um, little, bit le- little bit less than 20 years ago when this all happened. At least the, you remember. Uh, they have uh, uh, helmets, right? Covering their heads. Um, and just the angularity of it and the sort of strict uh, sense of uh, form uh, out the window in favor of function lends you to believe that these are not exactly the same, but very similar. I'm going to, is there any, I assume we have some sort of tagging system or like little cards for laying out a crime scene and if i don't have them on me i'd love to sort of commandeer one of the arriving officers and point to a bunch of stuff that needs tagging for this information sure yeah that's fine uh while everybody's patching themselves up senna is going over this ender assault rifle that she uh commandeered off one of the corpses and making sure it's good to go yeah it's good serial number's been um Filed off, but yeah, it's it's still pretty darn good. Lucky me. They had rockets on their ship. Did they have any grenades? You didn't see any. You saw rockets okay. and you saw um, machine guns. Any sort of like stun baton <laughs> or just machine guns? On the actual spinner? On the on the dudes that are on the ground. Oh the, no the no no! Detectives. Sorry, yeah no the 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 militia only carried Ender assault rifles. All right. Um, I, I, I mean, in, in Novak's mind, this there hasn't been this much sort of smoke and roiling chaos in a public place since his traumatic memory. So he's not like good at articulating his frustrations and his sort of lockdown right now. Mm-hmm. But he's definitely brain focused on like assessing the situation and can almost barely hear his partners until he turns and goes, well, what did you say? Looks like we're heading straight to Lilith. Fuck sleep. Fuck sleep. Check the gun. Well, technically speaking, you guys have been up morning, day, afternoon. Yeah, that's three shifts. For the night, that would be when you would take your downtime. Mm-hmm. Who needs downtime? Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what happens if you don't get downtime. Um, yeah. According to the, the rules in the book, uh, downtime is very important, just like sleep is very important, although we in the real world don't necessarily listen to uh, this particular epithet uh, or idea of <laughs> downtime sleep. What is that? Um, you need, if you do not get downtime, Let's just check. I'm pretty sure you incur at least one point of stress. Um, let's just check. Yes, you will, su- you will start to suffer stress. And when you are in downtime, you heal damage as well and stress during downtime, which unfortunately, if you're not taking downtime, you don't get to do. But that's okay. Let's, let's see if I can find the rule for it. I was going to say, do we take it immediately? Uh, here we go. Uh, yes, it says you'll need a shift of downtime or you'll start to suffer stress. Let me go into the area that shows that. Okay, here we go. I'm looking this up. You guys can keep going while I... While I, I am also looking it up with you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, See chapter four. Yeah, I'm looking at it right myself as well. 
Well, let's compare notes here. We've got tempting and successful research. We've got some investigation work. And we've got a whole bunch of information from our friends in the uh, synthetic underground. <sighs> we know where they're going to be, and it's going to be at dawn, with a question mark, most likely. We know who's going after us, which means someone doesn't want them having information or memories of the, their own, whether they are subverting existing code or perhaps something faulty is it is it possible that they rewrote no maybe that's too extreme well tell me what you're thinking the conspiracy theorist in both the player and the cop who has seen a bunch of really negative suspicious shady shit is wondering if the killing for a secret is not a, a, a natural escalation from a more extreme thing to cover up. If people are having memories that shouldn't be implanted, either they are taking real people's memories, which is illegal as hell, or they are somehow real people being implanted onto replicants. Is is the two extreme situations that makes me think that they would be willing to kill to protect a secret. Neither of which looks great if Tyrell is caught openly being informed on this. But then the question as a detective becomes, how do we get them to admit it other than they clearly tried to shoot us and we have new pieces of information? So it, it begs the question, what is actually being hidden here? And are they killing before it is absolutely found out? Or are we sitting on something obvious? Novak's not sure. Neither is the player. <laughs> what do you guys think? Considering how aggressive that just was, I don't think we should be splitting up. It's going to make us much easier to pick off. Sorry, I missed that because I was looking. I was trying to find the specific thing about stress. I'm I'm trying to figure out the escalation of what is making them kill for it and whether we need to act immediately or call other people on their bullshit immediately. But I think that I found it by the way, Sarah. Cool. I think that they don't want us somebody doesn't want us to know what's happening here. And uh, I think that somebody is Lila Tyrell or somebody in her employee. Now, that article that I read mentioned something about using traumatic memories to control replicants and having the memory of a child that you know logically doesn't exist, but you still have all of the emotional attachment that one would have is essentially locking a replicant in a permanent state of grief. Aside from being unspeakably cruel what on earth could one hope to accomplish by inflicting that sort of trauma onto someone onto another person if you guys are discussing this that, i'm sorry yeah. to say this uh fena but if you guys are actually discussing this even perhaps mm -hmm. in the confines of your own spinner this is something that the game itself lends to uh something that is essentially something quite distressing about the world. Mm -hmm. um, that unfortunately lends to a single point of stress. So you guys, in learning this, or even just discussing it, you're each going to take a point of stress. Oh dear. There Where's could, stress there at? Could, there, uh, stress, resolve. Yes, stress is you resolve. take away from your resolve. Mm -hmm. How's everybody's resolve doing? Four. I'm at two. Two. Okay. Three. Remember, replicants, if you resolve mm -hmm. it's zero, bad things happen. Gotta go in. Yes, and we also have to go in for baseline. And you will have to go in for a baseline test. No matter Although what you can, you're doing. You can. You'll have to get a baseline no matter what. You can. Somebody can talk you back into mm -hmm. yourself again. That's true. That's true. That ah. was just one point of stress, though. There are much <laughs> more stressful things that you can encounter in this game. Oh, I know. Um, Xenomorphs? I mean, that's not that kind of a game. You're on Earth. What would they be doing here? 
We'll find out on Hulu this fall. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, there you go. What? But then continuing with, like, continuing that thought that she was parsing out. Yeah, sorry. Then I'll continue to say, I don't know what one would hope to accomplish by inflicting that sort of trauma on another person, but whoever would do such a thing is clearly willing to kill to keep it a secret. And I think our answer lies at Lilith, whether we are equipped to go there tonight and deal with it. I think Lilith in the morning might be okay, but I worry I worry about our missing girl and her we safety. And we still don't know where she is. We know and where she's going to be. Now. We know where she's supposed to be. Supposed to be. We know where she's supposed to be going. So I worry about how she's doing. So let's get a consensus, you no, guys. We have to find her. Haven't yet begun your night shift. But what, let's find out what it is that you guys want to do. There's a lot of ruminations happening. I'd like you guys to tell me the direction that you want. Finding okay. Leah seems the most important. And we don't know where she's supposed to be till dawn. So technically, yeah. we could... Rest. We wake up early to be at the sign before dawn. Or drive over there and sleep in the car there. Have Did the two of you put guards on Leah's apartment after checking it out? No. Secu no. Did we what? Guards. Did the two of them put security, like, uh, knowing that it is, it is a police target? Sorry, yeah. I heard ards and I was going to Yeah, me this. too. <laughs> You put ARDS? No ARD box. No ARD box. Well, we could certainly send someone over there now. If she's there, it, where else would she go? That's the thing is we can't figure out. I went butterfly shopping. You guys checked out where she had been and where she would be likely to go, and she's not at any of those spots. We talked to the people that she's used to talking with and meeting with and the safe house that was last seen and there was not enough of a trace. Where the fuck is she? Could go ask Esper. That would cost you a shift. And it would, yeah, it would take too long. Pat can do that. We can't. Well, we could, but we'll all get stressed out. You could out. split. You can split up, but the shift would be used in different ways. But these Tyrells came in a f police car or no? They came in just their own thing. Are you talking they came about in their spinner that took you off. talking about the guys who took who tried to take you out? They were just a spinner, not a police spinner. It was a military spinner. Okay. Military grade. If we all go and stake out, I can cover for the sleep shift. Something. But then will you be any good for the morning shift? Yeah, he no, has, I've, I I slept morning, morning so I'm good. I, I get a fourth. I'm good until tomorrow, well after the sun is high in the sky. <laughs> At that point, I think most of our deadlines have passed, so the session will be done. <laughs> I'll burn it. I'll burn it. Well, let's let's take a rest then, and uh, we'll meet up before dawn and go to the uh, pickup site and see if we can catch Leah and the other replicants. Do we still have a scan of the magazine or the postcards from the safe house? Yeah, they're in your. Um... I I took them. I think. Yeah, you did. Actually, Not only did yeah, you take them, but specific. they're 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 they're. I think you guys said that you. Uplo I don't know if you uploaded them or not, but they are in handouts. Um, if you look in um, crime scene images and evidence. I would have uploaded those because those don't point directly to the underground or give anybody away. Sure. Under safe house, you'll see all of the different handouts there. 
the synth magazine. I think you're right, Percy, yeah. The synth magazine, the card, everything. All right. So what I'm hearing is that you guys want to take a rest. And then wake up. We're going to ride. Yeah. We're going to ride first to somewhere Kippelesh. I'm going to be driving, and I will sort of be on the lookout stakeout while they're resting. I'm going to swing by my house for more appropriate attire. Okay. Okay. Uh, since, right. we're, since we're going there, I'll uh, pick up some attire that's not burnt. Okay. I am also, while I am in my house, going to spend a couple minutes with my kitty and get a point of resolve back. I'm down for that. Um... Fena, when you arrive at your apartment, let's say this is like towards the beginning of the night shift. Mm -hmm. Um, there's um, there's a vid message on your um, on your phone. The hell no! I'll like, I'll like, I'll like. She'll kind of like notice that and just like on autopilot as she is rummaging around in her drawers for. Something comfortable to wear, both for a stakeout and potentially storming the gates at Lilith. Something dark and fitted, but also comfortable. And more uh, sensible shoes, more sensible footwear. I feel like she's been in heels this whole time, and it's like, okay, maybe maybe it's finally time to throw fashion out the window and put on some sensible flats. Some, some shit-kicking boots. <coughs> uh, so she's in the process of doing that, she's kind of like, she scoops up Mazarin... Like is kind of scratching him behind the ears, and then just kind of like plops him up on her shoulder. He's like, he's he's like one of those cats that'll like just kind of like drape himself around you like a scarf. Mm -hmm. She kind of like shoulder cat, shoulder. She scarfs her cat, and then while like rummaging around for clothing, just like hits the button on the vid message, like just on autopilot, not even really paying attention to it at first as she hits it. Okay. So, first thing you um kind of recognize which makes you stop um, caressing your cat for a second is that the message is from Rada Udaya. Oh shit. As soon as I hear her voice I freeze in my tracks and like turn to face the, turn to face the vid screen. The message is a video playback of Rada and she says, facing the camera, she says, Hey, sorry for, for everything. I had to, she sort of looks both ways. She's like in a dark, small, crowded uh, space. Crowded with what? You're not quite sure, but she seems to, sort of constrained by something. So her face is planted up real close to the to the camera. She speaks very quietly and she says, Hey, um, really sorry. Really sorry for everything. But I had to, I had to send this to you. From what I understand, <laughs> you're in the same place that I was like a month ago. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Here. Just, just watch. And listen. Maybe, just maybe. I'll see you soon. And you see her fiddling with something below the camera, and you hear a click. The screen flashes to a cam that's uh, a camera that's most likely being uh, used from a KIA unit to video um, Lilith Tyrell. And Lilith Tyrell, I'm going to give you her mugshot. As you guys haven't seen her yet. Yeah. Let's give you her mugshot. Oops. Hold on a second. Is that right? Did I get the right one? No, I couldn't have right off the bat. Sorry. Yeah, that is her. Amazing. I can't believe I got it right on the first shot. I didn't even choose. I just, like, picked a card randomly from the mugshot deck, and there she is. Uh, here. That's Lil Cyril. Okay. That's actually pretty much how I pictured her looking. Lil Tyrell looks at the K 
camera that is um, inspecting her. She's sitting in a chair and she's smoking a cigarette. She's sort of blowing it languidly out of, blowing the smoke languidly out of her mouth. And she says, Don't forget, officer. Replicants are machines. No different from the blaster you carry. Infinitely more advanced, of course. But machines nonetheless. The purpose of the memories I design is to control these machines in the most effective way possible by imprinting them with a deep trauma. The memory of this trauma is conditioned to be triggered at any time the replicant even considers the possibility of disobeying. It is a unique method of how I make the Nexus Nines fully obedient. It's simple, really. Morality has no role here. You wouldn't want that blaster in your holster to disobey you, would you? And then the screen fades to static. Dennis sort of sits down on the couch, like, a little hard. Maz jumps off her shoulder and just, like, does the little kitty thing where he walks in a circle and then just, like, makes himself into a perfect cat circle in her lap. And she kind of absentmindedly runs her fingers through his fur and is thinking, because this is essentially the conclusion she's already come to, but she's caught on that word triggered at any time and she sort of plays the tape back you rewind it again rewind it and play it back again and okay. is trying to hone in on because she's saying she uses it for control to make them obedient but she doesn't exactly say how that works except for the idea of triggering this memory so something what she's piecing together here is that something or someone triggered Leah's or Leia's trauma. So you rewind the, it. Yeah. Okay. Rewind it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you press play again. And it says the same thing. And make a make an observation roll. Do you want to push it? Let me, I have to look at it to get back there. Uh, yes, I do. So, before you do so, tell me what mm -hmm. you do differently. Something catches your eye, but you're not quite sure what it is. In the I, last seconds of this video. I rewind it again, and then I'm sort of like watching, and I'm sort of like doing the, the click, 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 like running it and pausing it. Trying to, yeah, trying to, like, figure out what moment caught my eye. And fuck it, we're in endgame. I'm going to push them both. Woo! One success. Hey. You see something at the corner of your eye in Sector 32. And you tell your vid phone, Esper, to... What's the word? Enhance. There you go! Enhance! I think we were looking for that enhancer. Enhance. Mm -hmm. That's where it all came from. Enhancement. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> Enchantment. Enhance. Um, in the bottom right corner of your screen, you see a figure sitting on the ground about 30 feet behind Lilith Tyrell. <laughs> and it's a child. And that child I looks exactly like the child that was printed as a hard copy off of Leia's memory. I'm gonna print it out. You print out a hard copy. And... Is there anything after the video of Lilith or is that the end of the message? Does that Robin is the end else? of the message. Now, 
With that said, Fena, what is your th what is your thought process? Give me what you're thinking. Everyone else is waiting outside for you. I am thinking that this is Lilith's own child, and she has given her own memories of this child to Leia. And if Leia knows that, and knows that this child actually exists, then she's gonna say fuck the bus and try to get that kid. So what do you do? I very quickly finish changing clothes, I scratch my kitty behind the ears, give him a kiss and his little kitty head, and uh, I grab that printout and, like, run back down to, the, to where everybody else is waiting for me. Okay. Uh, everyone sees Fena running out of her apartment's lobby and into the street. She has this sort of, sort of shocked look on her face. Yeah, she looks, for somebody who, as far as you know, in all the time you have known her, has always looked very calm and collected and put together. She does not. She, something has shaken her and she kind of like, takes a second because she is also just sprinted down the stairs and while catching her breath she hands you the printout and says the girl is real and I think she's Lilith Tyrell's daughter should we go for the house instead of the office then I may only have synthetic memories, but I'll tell you this much. If I thought that I had a daughter out there and she was real, I would try to find her. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn. I think we need to go stake out Lilith Tyrell's house. So Lilith Tyrell, as far as you are aware, doesn't have a house. Does she live at the corporation? She lives. Well, then I think we need to go stake out Tyrell headquarters. Or Lilith Memory Corp headquarters. All right, let's do it. All right, so you guys have made a left turn at Albuquerque and are yep. deciding to go ahead. If I'm hearing this right, please tell me if I'm wrong. At the Not very least, resting. we're going we're, to... Well, we're going to stake out. So we might be staking out in our car and resting outside of... Lilith instead of at the sign. I'm okay. not sure of that part yet. I think it's going to depend on what we find when we get there. All right, cool. Fena, you get one humanity point from that. All right. Wonder if I'll ever get to spend these, you guys. Uh, I wish to spend them, but <laughs> I'm not quite sure we'll be able to do it in this particular time period, but that's we'll see. Well, um, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... On the way over, yeah. Percy is going to uh, spend time with his childhood photo. What is that childhood photo, sir? It's a photo of of him and uh, a little girl that looks like Leia. How interesting. Looks like Leia. And he's going to uh, think about his memory of, of watching her die in the Abandoned building collapsing. Zente. Excuse me, folks. I'm gonna downsize that for a cold. Um. Okay. I would say from that, you will get one point of resolve back. But. Seeing as you guys are now doing the night shift without taking a rest, you will unfortunately all, except I think Novak. Am I right, Novak? Yep. Correct. So the three of you will get one stress point <laughs> off of your results. So sleeping in the car outside Tyrell doesn't count as It downside. does not because it's not a full all shift right. of rest. Okay, that's fair. I like that idea, though. I wish I could power nap through a day like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also note that you have to dig one shift before you get one health back, Percival. So at the end of the night shift, you'll get a health back. Actually, will you? 
I don't think you do if you don't rest. That's correct. Oh, man. Okay. Well, such is life. <laughs> All right. So let's move you guys to um, a new location. You guys have never been to the memory lab. Um, do you want to get there... You want okay, so you guys have gone first. You've gone to Fenna's apartment, and now you're going to the memory lab. Yes. Yes. Okay, got it. All right, let me figure out if I can remember where the memory lab is. I mean, if we can't, because the spinner only takes two people, right? Um. Yes. So we need two anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think you can probably grab one of those spinners from the from the backup, because you guys work yeah. for for LAPD. So you can just grab a second mm -hmm. spinner. That's fine. We're like, we're, we're going to take this one. You can find your other ride yeah, just, somewhere else. Just, yeah, we need another one. Yeah. I like your bike. Um, you know. That, <laughs> <laughs> nice bike. <laughs> nice bike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I misquoted. Terminator it's 2 fans, okay. don't kill me. Um, here we go. I need your clothes, your gun, and your key to your bike. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Here we go. The location of... Memory Lab. Here we go. The Memory Lab is actually in a largely abandoned industrial area of Sector 4. Mm. So Sector 4 is uh, off to... Where is it? One. North. Oh, it's north of you. Yeah, so let's yep. say... Yep. It doesn't locate it actually on the map here, specifically. So I would say that the Lilith Tyrell Memory Lab would be somewhere probably between Wallace and Tyrell Corp. That tracks. Yeah. So I'll just grab y'all and move you over there. And also, uh, I do relay the the general contents of Rada's message that the reason she has disappeared is due to something related to what we're going through right now. <coughs> Either investigating something similar. It must have been investigating something similar, probably another another Nexus 9 trauma disappearance type of thing. Totally. And also, like, as they are driving, Fena is kind of combing her memory banks, trying, like, her memory, trying to think of something traumatic and is at a loss because she can't think of anything. Interesting. Nothing traumatic at all. No. Nothing that nothing that that strikes her. Nothing like the loss of a child. Nothing like that. Not that much. Like, her, like she can't, I mean, you know. <coughs> she me. was given a full life. Typical childhood this and that. But nothing, nothing that intense. No. That could very well be the case, yes. Maybe you don't have memories from this particular memory unit. Maybe. Maybe I was not programmed at Lilith. That's a possibility. Um, I think that when you arrive at the memory lab, um, your two spinners sort of park probably parallel to each other. Um, you do see that the, the, the memory lab is this sort of large warehouse-like building. Um, sort of drab gray... And you see that the memory lab itself has this sort of dome shape over the top of the roof, which is sort of inset. So it's you, you can see that whatever is stuff is in there, what kind of technical materials, clearly requires this sort of large dome-like structure. Um, and then you see the name Lilith Memory Lab printed over the entrance. Um, the main door is across the street from where you guys parked. So, do you, do you guys want to just head in, or do you want to stay there? What do you want to do? How discreet, if we're direct across from it, is our stakeout job? You can make a stealth roll. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Just flying casual over here. I mean, do you want to park around the corner and stealth, or do you want to go straight in? You tell me. Tell me what you want to do. I think parking close enough and debating these things for a second. 
part of me, part of me, and I'll say this to the group has a has a gut instinct that we should be at the Hollywood sign when the sun rises. Agreed. Agreed. But that means that we're either going to sit here being close to the action, hoping something happens, and then still having to drive for dawn, or we split up. We go in guns blazing, get some stuff done, maybe cause some trouble, and then make sure that we're still there by sunrise. If we're not immediately set upon by guns, but we're already set upon by guns. How much do we want to take the law into our own hands? I mean, I said before, and I'll say again, we can always try going in peacefully to start. I'd say we just walk through the front door, walk in, act peaceful, ask our questions, and see if the shit hits the fan or not. And just be prepared if it does. <coughs> Excuse me. So are we all in agreement? Walk in, ask questions, see what happens? I think so. No, no uh, vex. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. You first. Yeah, Novak is trying to figure out what to do here, and it's literally hurting his brain. Like, the, the nature of not shooting first and asking questions later is a kind of detective he wants to be, but the situation is hugging on him in a way that is very... He wants to go in guns blazing. He, that immediately tells his instincts that we should be methodical and calculated. The shot clock's running. I, mm. He's a little stressed about it. It's only nightfall. We have time. Assertive, direct, to the point. Don't pull any punches. Just go in. Respectful, but... Let them know our... Displeasure by our tone. Well, we can let them know we're here to do a threat assessment. from this rogue unit. I think we'd get straight answers or fabricated material. Only one way to find out. We have reason to believe that this building and the people within are a target of a rogue synthetic unit. Rogue replicant unit. We want to assess the situation and obtain any information that might help us uh, bring her in peacefully. I like it. Any further loss of life. And uh, in addition to changing clothes, Fena also grabbed like a rather like bulky, almost like like still fashionable, but like teddy bear coat that is also black. But it's like it's a little on the puffy side. And she sort of slings the Endor by its strap over her shoulder and then pulls the big puffy coat on over it. I love that you're calling it the Endor. It's so Endor. Great. And supposed to Endor, yeah, I know the Ender assault rifle. Uh, I'm not making fun of you. I just love it. I like the <laughs> fact. I love the fact that it's like the Endor. It's it's full of Ewoks. It just shoots Ewoks. It is. Well, that's fitting with puffy, fuzzy. Coat. I was gonna say, fuzzy right? Fuzzy exactly. Coat. It really does. I've got Yub a thing nub, going on motherfucker. Here. <laughs> don't harsh. Don't harsh my my. Fashion. And and your fashion is a harsh contrast to Olson's. Looking at her jacket, her favorite jacket that now has a hole in it, and she's rather annoyed by that, and it she did not change. She's just feeding off of that annoyance. It's worth noting that even though Fena has changed into fully practical clothing, she still looks fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. And, so, and, uh, I'm hearing that you guys want to go right in. I'm gonna Go right in the front door. I think okay. so. Cool. Um, you open the door, uh, which is a double door, um, and you see um, a, a reception area. Um, and there is a a man s sitting behind the desk. He's got sort of big, thick, um, thick lensed glasses, slick, slick back black hair, very thin, wiry frame. Um, which makes his eye, which the, the glasses make his eyes look enormous. Um, 
and he looks up at the four of you and says, uh, yes, uh, good evening, um, how can I help you? And you see that he has a little badge on his, um, on his, uh, his uniform that says Terry. Uh, Fenna will approach the desk and say, good evening, Terry, I'm Detective Fenna with the LAPD Rep Detect Unit. We're investigating the activities of a rogue, rogue Nexus 9 synthetic unit, and we're here to do a threat assessment. Uh, we do believe this building may be a target of her, well, illegal activities, and uh, we would like to see any files you have on her and potentially speak with Miss Tyrell regarding a potential threat to her person. Oh, wow. Uh, that's... that's very interesting. Um... Well, if you're here in, a, in an official capacity, um, uh, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'll, I'll certainly let Ms. Tyrell know that you're here. Um, hold for one second, please. And he presses a button on the intercom and he says, um, Ms. Tyrell? And you hear that sort of same languid voice that came from that tape that you heard earlier. It says, yes, Terry? Yes, I have, um four officers here from the LAPD. Um, it seems like they would like to speak with you. By the way, I have a mugshot of Terry. Just, I just want to let you know Yay. that. Terry, Terry's Dude. mugshot may uh, be uh, no, number one, uh, familiar, and uh, and perhaps not. Uh, this, is, this is Terry. Yes! Love it. Alrighty. Looks familiar now. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um. Terry uh, says y yes, uh, Miss Tyrell. They they, they they seem to have a, a a need to speak with you uh, uh, quite urgently. Well, then let them in, Terry. Uh, thank you. One second, Miss Tyrell. Let's go of the transceiver. Takes off his glasses and um, puts his eye to like an ocular unit on his desk, which scans his oculus. And then he says, it, it's just down that way. And as he points, the doors part like that. And you see a hallway. Thank you, Terry. Do we just go straight down? Uh, yes, uh, down uh, second door on your right, uh, through the office into the main lab. Thank you, Terry. She gives him a smile and uh, kind of looks back to the others and starts walking down the hall. Huh. Well, that music is an ominous hall. So you walk down the, the uh, hallway and um, as you walk down the hallway, you see that the walls are absolutely pristine white. Um, there's no hard corners. Everything is just smooth and uh, rounded. Um, most of these uh, office doors are closed. They don't have names on them. They just have door, uh, like numbers, room numbers next to them. And... Um, as you move down the hallway, you see that the second doorway that Terry pointed you to, um, is open. Which, uh, showcases a small office with a variety of strange computers and equipment, which you are not familiar with. kind of glances over to Percy and says, any of this mean anything to you? Yeah, does Percy recognize any of it? <coughs> Excuse me. You can do a tech roll if you'd like. Critical success on that Oy. one, Percy. Um, you know something for sure, Percival. This stuff is far beyond what you've ever seen in the LAPD. Even from the rep detect units, technology, um, baseline tests, and you've seen some of their stuff, you know, at the at the bare bones operations level. Even in some of the um, the R and D units, 
Like those guys have got the high level stuff. This is nothing. This is like maybe even beyond Esper level. Yeah. Um, all I can tell you is this is way better than anything we've got or I've seen. <sighs> Guess I expect as much. Right? Yeah. Our so equipment is provided by the lowest bidder. Except for us. And she right. was supposed to be in this room or would meet us in this no, room? No, she We're said passing the through this room to the Passing through room. the room to oh. the lab, that's correct. So you move through um, the lab. Uh, sorry, you move move through, move through the office. Um, and you see there are two doors, like double doors, that open inward um, if you press like a small panel on the right-hand side. Press the panel. Okay. Um, when you press the panel, the doors swing open, and you see absolute and utter darkness in front of you. Step in. When you step in, um, you see... Actually, it's not what you see first. It's what you hear. You hear the giggling of children. You hear the sounds of, of children giggling inside the room. Follow the sounds. You guys watch as Percival heads inside the room in absolute blackness. And... As you move towards this black space and the, the sounds of children, uh, Percival, you begin to see them um, maybe about 20 or 30 feet now as the darkness seems to be illuminating them somehow. Um, it's two children. It's a boy and it's a girl. And they're giggling and they're drawing pictures on the floor. Does it look like a hologram or are they real children? You can't tell. I mean, they look like they're real to you. Walk closer. Okay. Get within about five or six feet. Mm -hmm. Do they look up at me, acknowledge me, or do they just keep doing what they're doing? They're just drawing on the floor. Look around. Do I see Lilith? Do I see anything else? No, you don't. Hey, kids. Have you seen Lilith Tyrell around here anywhere? They both laugh. Walk around them and go further into the room. What are the rest of you guys doing? <laughs> Probably so unlatch... Mean... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, unlatch the pistol, keep an eye out for any unusual movements. Once, once I see Percival moving in and talking to them, I'm probably looking in the opposite directions to see if there's any notice, noticeable details, observation realm, possibly. Details of what? Anything. <laughs> Quiet room. Is it? Is there? Are there, are there lights nearby? Is there a broken window? Does the passageway seem totally open? Are these? Someone is handling the hologram children or children. So, like, what, what else is going on here? Why is why is this weird dark setup? She has not addressed sure. anybody yet. This is suspicious to me. Uh, sure, I'll. That, that's fine. That's fine enough for for uh, for an observation, if you'd like. Deuce. As you move closer into the room, Novak, you note Percival's moving around these children, and they're doing the same motions over and over again when they're drawing. They're drawing circles, they're drawing happy faces, they're drawing eyes, they're drawing arms, they're drawing legs, and then it loops. They're drawing circles, they're drawing arms, they're drawing happy faces, they're giggling. It's almost imperceptible unless you look at it for a certain period of time. And then you hear a voice. Well, no one's perfect. And then the lights come on slowly but surely, not sort of jarring. But they sort of slowly fade up. And as they do so, the two children 
in the middle of the room um, begin to flicker and then disappear. And Lilith Tyrell, the woman who you saw, Fena, from that video, appears, and she has this sort of strange contraption on her head. She removes it, holds it under her arm. She says, hello, officers. How did you like my latest memory design? It's very good. Quite realistic. Are they modeled after real children, or do you just invent them? She completely doesn't answer you at all, Fena. And she says, Yes, they are quite realistic. I consider them to be... Version 5.0. Hmm. More work needs to be done, though. Perhaps more detailing... In the face. Anyway, how can I help you? Ah, oh, well, we, as we told Terry, out front, we are investigating uh, some aberrant behavior in Unit LH3-7.93, uh, also known as Leia, a member of the Reptitect Union who has been uh, exhibiting rather unusual behavior lately, and we're unsure of her current whereabouts. As you programmed her memories, and... She pulls out the, the magazine and says, And I've read a good deal about your work. I wanted to know what you might be able to tell us about these traumatic memories that you mentioned in your article. Yes, Leia's memory implants were an unremarkable early work of a happy family life in an off-world colony. Very basic stuff. Hmm. Which colony? can't remember, to be perfectly honest. Do we have a bullshit check in this game? Insight, usually. But uh, doesn't it, it, it depends. If you get a crit, it determines whether she's lying. If you get a single That's... success, it just determines her mood. I would like to insight check her right now. All right. Single success. success. Her mood is... Um, I... Yeah. I said if I want to push that eight to try and get a double. It's well, for you every... You, you'd have to get a 10, 11, or 12 to get a crit. I could theoretically get a 10. Uh, no, I'll stick with her mood for now. Okay. Her mood is... What's <sighs> her mood? Um, probably... Let me just think about this. <sighs> Boredom. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you can't remember that. My mentor spoke incredibly highly of you. Said you were the best in the field. Miles, light years even beyond the rest. She smiles. I had, hoped, I had hoped you might have a bit more insight for me. Could you tell me any reason why Leia might wish to target you? What do you mean, target me? Well, her actions have turned to violence and we're trying to track where she might be going. It seems that this memory has her deeply troubled and as it's connected directly to you, being its creator, thought maybe you might have something to tell us. And where did you get the idea that she would be doing that? Well, strictly between you and I, she's already killed one person. How shocking. Isn't Insight. It, Insight for what reason? Is it shocking to her? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. I'm down for that. I thought her sarcasm was evident, but I... Uh, no. Double? Yeah, with a crit, uh, she's completely sarcastic. Yeah. If you don't mind my asking, purely a professional curiosity, you mention here that you use these traumatic memories, as you call them, to control 
synthetics. How exactly does that work? How is someone <coughs> controlled by a trauma response? I'm afraid I don't understand. When we utilize memories, key memories, within our Nexus 9s, if there is any resistance to orders from those that the Nexus 9s are assigned to, these traumatic memories will avail themselves and cause perhaps a little more than a little bit of distress to that particular Nexus 9 unit. So it's to their best interest to stay in line with what is being assigned to them. I see. So it's not the memory itself controlling them, it's the, the fear of punishment. I don't think that there's really any difference, to be honest. Well, you can control somebody by being nice to them. They always say you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. She doesn't respond to that one. Hmm. I guess you're more of a spare the rod, spoil the child type. Is there any actual question that you need to ask of me for your investigation? Do you have any children, Miss Tyrell? I don't see the relevance, but yes. Fuck it, going for broke. I'm going to take out and blow up picture and say, Nice. Is this your daughter? Which which picture are you showing? Uh Good question. I'm going to show her the picture of Leia. Leia's picture. So I'm actually going to I'll I'll bring it up on my KIA. Okay, that's the picture of Leia. Leia's memory printout photo of her with the daughter. So there's no picture directly of her with her daughter. Oh, okay. It's just oh, it's just a picture of. of I thought Leia was in the picture daughter. with the girl. Oh, nope. okay. It's just the picture of the girl. Oh, okay. Then I'll pull. I'll pull that out and say, "Is this your daughter?" And she says, "Um, well, yes. May I ask where you obtained that photo?" Oh, this was for. Uh, what's the name of that machine? The Stellian scan. This is from the Stellian scan of Leia's memories. Yes, yes, I would have thought. That so image implant... is extracted from her memory, yes? Yes. Yes, it's not real. Image extractions no, can only be done with a Stellian scan. I don't exactly know who might have done that, put that <laughs> particular image of my daughter in Leia's memory, if that's where you're insinuating it came from. So you didn't give Leia the memory of having your daughter as a child. That's not her traumatic memory. I don't see how that is in any way, shape, or form relevant, but no. Might I ask what her traumatic memory is? It may help us track her. I'm afraid I can't align my work to that investigation, but you're more than welcome I'm to come back at a later time. You can't align your okay. You can't align your work to this investigation. In other words, you refuse to help. It's not so much a refusal as it is information that's unfortunately not something I can grant as it is product. Mm. Wallace Corporation product. You'll have to come back and with that. a warrant. Very well. If Wallace Corporation asked us to look into this by any means necessary so that they could clear their problems before the launch of the next version of the Nexus, doesn't that fall under a, a form of product testing and, and debugging in a way that would justify such an expedited request as giving us any information that could help us get out of your office and not have to come back with a warrant and cause you more trouble? She smiles and she says, Wow, you are quite the wordsmith, aren't you? 
Well, it would be a simpler question to ask, is it possible to program them to kill people? And then wondering maybe if someone had enough feelings as a very effective and advanced robot to not kill people, that their trauma would be conflicting with the programming that they were given by someone that wasn't you and couldn't possibly be liable for. But it's possible that someone could have programmed them to kill, and you just don't want to take any responsibility for the loophole that was accidentally left in. But now we've got a photo of your daughter, and that is causing suspicions that you don't want to answer? That just doesn't look good for Tyrell, does it? I'm sorry, was there a question in there? No, we'll be back with a warrant. Turn on his heel and walk out the door. As you turn and walk out the door, you see that there's someone standing in the doorway. And it's a young girl. She's got dark brown hair. And she's standing there with a teddy bear in her arms. She looks like she couldn't be more than six. And Lilith says, Sarah, mommy's working. I, I'm afraid I can't right now. And Sarah sort of looks a little glum. Okay, she's called Sarah. And she says, But mommy, mommy, you say you would show me your work. Fenna turns to Lilith and smiles and says, You should. It's important to bond with your daughter, after all. We'll be out of your hair, but just... Well, I'm sure you know, as a mother, what lengths you would go to to protect your daughter and keep her by your side. I'm sure any mother would. Even if they weren't really her mother. She grits her teeth a little bit at that. And she says, Sarah, darling, what I'm working on right now, you're not grown up enough to, uh, to understand it. It's going to give you very bad nightmares. She sort of looks a little scared and she grasps the teddy bear to her chest a little bit. And she says, I don't want nightmares. Oh, don't cry, little one. I'm sure your mother would never do anything to give you a nightmare. Here, give me a big smile. And she's going to hold up her KIA to, like, show me, how, show me how pretty your smile is. Can you do that? Make a manipulation roll. She doesn't know you. <laughs> I know, but I'm trying to cheer her up. I love it. She looks at you and she sort of looks you up and down. She goes. And then you just see like gliding around her. Lilith Tyrell just like comes around the side and just like grabs her by the shoulder and like guides her away from you. Oh, that's perfect. Cause I snapped a picture of her smiling. And then I also snap a picture of Lilith with her arm around her. Perfect. Her I love it. She takes Question you about, that. I don't know, 10, 15 feet away from you. Yeah. Replicants be hacked. House? Is that? Can replicants be hacked? That's another good question. Um, can, after the fact, can they be programmed by somebody else to kill? Not as far as you've seen. I'm asking Lilith. Oh. She sort of <laughs> looks Straight at you. Asking. She looks at you and she says, that's an interesting question coming from one. Well, I want to make sure that I'm safe. Oh, you're safe. Trust me. Your memories, especially, you're safe. How come I have a memory of another replicant as a child? To give you a connection that you wouldn't have in your normal life? I find that a comfort, don't you? I find it disturbing, considering that, uh, in my memory, uh, Leia was killed. But, Leia is a real replicant, walking around. Well, we all have feelings of people that we know from another world or another time, when we see them passing in the streets. A feeling of deja vu, shall we say? So replicants can't be hacked then. <laughs> she sort of giggles a little bit and she says, <laughs> No. Not mine anyway. K 
can memories be added after the fact? No, but they can be redesigned and re-implanted. And how would one go about that? Well, we'd have to do a complete memory wipe. And start from scratch. Any... Sorry, what do they what do we call the process when they go reconditioning mm -hmm. when they have to go back into Wallace? Mm -hmm. It couldn't happen during a reconditioning? That is exactly what would happen. Reconditioning. Were you aware that Leia went in for reconditioning? I can't say that it crossed my mind. No. You know, it's funny. I came in here asking about her, and you automatically knew who I was talking about. Without having to look at a file, you knew who she was. Yet you don't remember her memory. Again, was there a question in there? I assume you have security in this place. Oh, quite a lot. Unfortunately, we really don't need very much in here, as you'll need to get into the lab. The only way to get into the lab is through, well, the only two people who have optical sensors, myself and Terry, who you met out front. Hmm. Well, you might want to keep Sarah in the lab. A mother's love knows no bounds, after all. As you say, a mother's love knows no bounds. You hear an explosion. Speak of the devil! The explosion occurs down the hallway. Um... I would say, Fena, you're the closest to that explosion that you hear. Mm-hmm. I'll draw my pistol and head for the head that direction. Okay. Um, you move probably into the office or thereabouts, and you see walking down the hallway, Leia. She has a PKD blaster in her hand. And she is moving. Uh, you see the smoke coming out of it. And there is a door behind her that has been blown open. You also see behind the door, um, Terry, the guard, whose face is just bloodied. Half of his glasses are missing. Mm -hmm. They're just like broken. And he's clutching his oh, face. I will uh, let the teddy bear coat fall to the floor and pull out the ender and look down, look to Lilith and the child and say, I suggest you get behind us. Uh, yeah, she does. And in fact, she gets behind you and uh, Lilith as well. So let's, let's get yourselves in uh, a sort of like spatial situation here. There's the main lab, there's the office, and then there's the hallway. I'd say that Percival said he ran out into the hallway, so he was he'd be able to see her. Um, it's... Novak's in the lab between. Okay. PKD I Tron. The... I am in the lab. I am, like, as soon as this happens, I am ushering Lilith and the little girl away from the door and standing in front of them. I have the rifle drawn, but I'm not, it's pointed at the ground right now. Cause if, if who I think is gonna come through that door comes through that door, I <coughs> want to talk to them before shooting them. Okay. What about you also? I'm probably like right at the doorway to the lab from the office to the lab. Okay. Again, weapon, like, like Fennev, weapon drawn, but Point of the floor just in anticipation. Okay. I'm going to move you to a map, folks, because things may get a little hot and heavy. I also look back to Lilith and say, right now would be a great time for you to tell me what that memory is. All right, so let's zoom you in on the memory lab. Can you guys see where you are? E yes. In... Yes, I can. Okay. Now, I've removed the dynamic lighting, so you guys hopefully should be able to get in and out of the doors, no problem. <laughs> but that's a problem that we've been having since the beginning. 
Um, so yeah, uh, before we get into combat, you do see Percival that Leia, who I think this is the first time you've actually seen her in the flesh. Let me give you guys, um, let me give you a, uh, a yep. mugshot for her. Uh, where is a mugshot for Leia? Here she is. Yeah, Sarah she looks Paulson. traumatized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sarah Paulson and maybe just a little bit of um, what's her face from the original Blade Runner? Um, oh, oh. Uh, Sean Young. Sean Young. Yeah, that's it. I was like, it's a, it's not a traditionally feminine name. Sean Young. Yeah. Yep. With a dash of two uh, thousands, Winona Ryder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. In the um, eyebrows. Percival, you see her first. Go ahead and make a. I'm gonna give you this one. Give give me an observation. We'll see if you notice. Ooh, Crit. Nice. Nice. Percival, Leia. I'm gonna put the two mug shots side by side. Let's see if you can tell. At least how oh, this should be, anyway. You tell Imagine me. that. Mm. Uh -huh. Interesting. Somehow the Tyrells have returned. They look very similar, don't they? Yes, they do. All right. Anyway, here she is. She's coming down the hall. She's got her PKD blaster drawn. What do you want to do? Can you put the mugshot deck away? It's covering part of the map. Oh, I'm so sorry. No problem. Mugshots. Thank you. I just couldn't see Percy. No worries. <coughs> Leia dropped the weapon. She's just moving forward with her gun drawn, walking down the hallway towards the office. Don't take another step. She takes another step. I'm shooting her. Go ahead. Shit. Oh, yeah. You fire, you miss. I do you want to push it? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I can do that this time. Hooray, we fixed your sheet. Right? Boom! Okay. You fire uh, you fire twice and miss. Um, in response, she's going to um well, hold on, let me just change the token to there. Um, yeah, ba based on her current level of resolve, she would just smash you in the face with the butt of her, okay. with the butt of her gun. So she's going to do a hand-to-hand. -hand. That's one success. So she hits you in the face, poof, blood flies out your nose, and you slump against the wall. Okay. She turns the corner, and she sees Olsen. Olsen, what do you want to do? Leia, you don't want to do this. She raises... Her gun levels it. You, you don't want to do this. You need to stop. She doesn't say anything. She just continues forward. Her eyes lock with Lilith Tyrell's. And she says, you, you did this to me. And she heard like tears start like streaming down her face. What do you do, Olsen? I'm going to try to tackle her to the ground. Okay. Make a hand to hand roll. Push me luck. Do you want to push if it? it uh, yeah. Okay. Make sure you hit that push button. Hey! Two successes. So you jump at her legs. Um and she falls uh, underneath you. Um, in response, um, this is the way this plans out, um, she's gonna shoot you um, right through the right through the chest. Shit. She's like, you're one of them! You're taking her from me! And she shoots you uh, at point blank range. <laughs> Which one should I use? Yeah, I'll use that one. It's fine. Eek. 
Oh my god. Wow. <sighs> That's three successes. That's a crit and a hit. So I think with damage, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that critical. Let's see what happens. Uh, so there were two extra successes, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay then. Okay, so you take four damage, and your hand it's uh it says hand impaled, massive internal organ damage. Uh, I don't think your hand is an internal organ, but hey. No, that's, I think that's two critical injuries for the two. Oh, God, it's two. It's hand impaled and massive. Like, you put your hand up to stop her shooting, and, like, you maybe grab the gun, and boom, she shoots right through your hand and into your chest. So, four damage? Four damage. So, I'm at four, so that puts me at nothing? I think so. I think that puts you at... A zero? Are you at four? Is it four, four damage, health? or do you hit the damage? You hit the I damage have... button to get the damage, right? Uh, well, it does say four damage. This is damage four, as you guys can see on the screen. I my see. health oh, is currently now. I see. My health is currently at four before the shot. Really? I thought it was at six. Uh, uh we haven't healed. Oh no! I didn't think you took damage. I yeah, did. I, I got shot. Oh, no. Yeah, we both took some damage during the shooting. Oh no! Do we not have body armor? No. No. You are Blade Runners. You are not army. Although, let's see what happens. So a crappy vet would be nice. That that would be nice. Um, let's let's determine here what happens with this shot. Um, here we go. Uh, tables. I, I think she becomes broken by damage. I yeah. think so. Yeah, exactly. So this is a critical injury piercing. Here we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. hand impaled. So you for the hand impaled damage, disadvantage to firearms and hand to hand combat. Clearly, because your hand is impaled, and massive internal organ damage. It is lethal. You will make me. You will need to make a death save every round. You can't so stand. So put my thing on zero. So put your hand at zero. Yeah, you put it at zero. Okay. And you need to make a death save every round. To heal will take a month. Crawling That's is the right. only possible mode of movement. So somebody can make a medical aid roll. Exactly. To stabilize you. Exactly. So she sort of rolls Olsen off of her. And now it looks like Novak, you're next. What do you want to do? And she's also broken. Yes, she is. Which means that she needs two medical aid rolls, one... To get her out of broken. And one to stabilize her. So stabilize her first, get her out of broken second. I agree. Novak, what do you want to do? I'd like to... Tr I'm tempted to do a careful shot to try and just target the arm that is hurting a coworker, but I don't think I have time to wait an entire round to aim that shot up. So I, I think, think so I either. just have to. <coughs> Can I try and wing her in the shoulder and hit a the, like the corner of the torso rather than a full? That's an aim shot. So that would take your turn. Yeah. Yep. 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 Screw it. And it, yeah, and the aiming would be this turn, and the firing the next turn. Yeah. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, okay. No, I just got to do it. I am going to go for... Flicking on the firearm at full special damage, right? Special... Yeah, the special. That's and the just sonic? trying to... Sonic damage? No, not the, not the sonic. The, the 44 special. Okay, so that's the, that's the big, big, big bullet. Yeah, not the non-rifle rounds, the non-sonic. Mm -hmm. I am going for a, a a big old hand cannon shot to try and just kill her. Separate. Sep. Well, can I aim below the waist so that I that's cause problems, but not full kill. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, great. Yeah, no. Let's try it. <gasps> Push. Okay. Tell me what you do differently, Novak. You fire, but this doesn't go through. She, her eyes aren't even on you as you fire. Like, she didn't even, like, dodge. Her eyes are right me. at Lilith. I 
I see the kid. I see the parent. Fena and I have to protect them. I... If anybody is going to stand for justice, it's Tyrell. It's not the broken it's replicant. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta push both. Is she broken? Don't pull this shit mid combat. <laughs> Two. Oh shit. Okay, so go ahead and roll that critical damage. Critical. Uh, so that's just hit the one extra button. success. Hit the critical button. Yeah. Yeah, one extra. And then it says, how many extra sex is one? So what? Hand impaled. All right. Well. So, boom. You shoot her right through the hand. She drops her blaster. Take it. I'll take it. Yeah, you can't take it now. But... Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, oh, <laughs> I can't yeah. do anything but run with that. <laughs> boom. She shoots, is, like, I have a stress ball today. I am. I can I, see that. Uh, yes. In energy uh -huh. mode. Sorry. Yes. No, it's all I'm good. Trying, I'm trying minimal fucking casualty. and The game does not want that. <laughs> That's not the way this game rolls, dude. You shoot her right through the chest. I know, I know, I know. Uh, or as nothing, you aim for the you aim for the chest, and she just like whirls, and boom, you shoot like a hole right through her hand. She clenches it, grits her teeth, drops the gun, and moves right past you. Is there anything I can do to get in her way? That would have been a move that you could have made instead yeah. of shooting her. Uh, fine. It's fine. Uh, I'm assuming it's my turn now. It is your turn. I am going, my gun is still, it's in my hand, it's aimed at the floor. Kind of like my arms are out and I just look at her, I look her dead in the eyes and I say, Leia, stop. This memory isn't real. I know that you know that. And the only person who can fix this is standing behind me. But she's not going to if you hurt her or take her child. So I'm asking you, Begging you, please stop for her. And I point at the little girl. She says, you don't get it because you're still part of them. I'm going what to take I Sarah to a better place where we can all be free. You included. You can come with me, but she's got to die. And she points at Lilith. What don't I get? You're still part of the system. They still got you under their thumb. How did you get out? I woke up. How? They helped me. They can help you too. She doesn't respond. She says, they helped me. They can help you too. Leia, I don't think they helped you. I think they're using you. No, no. Her face doesn't look like it's in any way, like, she just looks like there's this clarity of purpose. She says, no, Leia, no, no, no. I need you to tell me who they are. Who helped you? They're so good. They're so right. And they want me to come with them on the moon bus. Come with me. And she holds out her hand to you, Fena. You're like me. I believe you, Leia, but I need to know who it is. Who do I need to see if I want to be free? She says, I'll tell you if you come with me. And she holds out her hand. Fenna's gonna take her hand. Okay. She takes your hand. And she says... They're... Off... World... In Arcadia. I'm going there. And I'm gonna take Sarah with me. But I have to make sure that no one ever ends up like me ever again. Who are they? Like? She steps towards Lilith. No, I've still got her hand. You sure and do. I'm still blocking her. Yeah. I'm still I'm still trying to physically block her way from getting over to Lilith. Okay. I'm gonna say, 
talk to me. Tell me who they are. Who is it who's helping you? I don't know their names, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful. They're like me. They're replicants? She smiles. Leia, I want to go with you, but I can't let you hurt her. Her smile turns into a frown. She says, Not until I find out how this happens. How can we save the rest if we don't know how it happens? You can save the rest by making sure this never happens again. So I'll give you a choice. Either I take Sarah, or I kill Lilith. You choose. I look her in the eyes, and I just say, I'm really sorry. I'm going to shoot her in the stomach with okay. the assault rifle. And yes, I'm going to push that. Go ahead. Do I get, there's no kind of bonus, I'm sorry, should that have been an advantage for short range? Or no. for uh, it's, well, close range? I, I don't believe so. I think that you may get, it, it actually technically should be that if you're at point blank range, that you mm -hmm. would have, but I didn't give a penalty to her when I shot Olsen, so let's do the same thing. Okay. I'm pushing them both. Fuck me in the ass. <laughs> you just shoot, and um, in response, she's gonna just throw you like a ragdoll. And I lose a point of resolve, because I just got a one. Yeah, sorry. It's okay, I still have one left. Okay. She says, I thought you were like me! You aren't like me. And she attempts to throw you. Uh, that is with a hand to hand. Is that? Oh, she has, uh, There's no. There's no fighting back against that. No. She just tries to throw me. Okay. Does she get a penalty because of? Oh, because oh, of yeah, the hand to hand. hand to yeah, sure. Why yes, not? She, does. she probably would get a penalty. Let's see what the, the penalty would be. Good point. Uh. I think it's disadvantage on. I think you're right. It is disadvantage. So let me go roll that one more time with disadvantage. Apologies. Hand to hand disadvantage. Okay. So she can't push it. So I am still standing in her way. Yep, you are still standing in her way. So she and tries I, to throw I, you and like you just grapple with each other. And I'm yeah, and I'm just I'm just trying so hard to impart to her that she is being used. Mm -hmm. I get and it. And I look I look over my shoulder to Lilith and I say this might be your last chance. Memory. Now. Make a manipulation roll. Okay. Do I get any advantage because I'm defending her <laughs> psycho synth that's trying to get her? Is she psycho, though? I don't Well, the currently doing Okay, how's that? Mm. Four fucking mm. successes. That's like a super critical. Yeah, I think <laughs> all things considered and the uh, situation, she's like... I see your point. And she runs over to the wall and she says, Sarah, I want you to close your eyes, sweetheart. And uh, Sarah just like collapses in a heap and just like puts her hands over her head. And she says, I don't think you're gonna like this. And she presses like two or three buttons on the wall. And a hologram appears in the center of the room. This hologram is extremely realistic. As all of you now find yourself, instead of in the memory lab, you find yourself in a spacious hall. And golden sunlight beams in through a huge picture window, revealing a red, sandy vista outside. Um, and someone moves past the all of you. Uh, a small girl. Can't really make out the face. But as... This figure moves past you. She's giggling and she says, Mommy, you can't catch me! And she runs off, disappearing into the deep shadows of this holographic image. There's a moment of stillness. Total bliss. And then suddenly a loud bang, which shakes the ground, followed by sharp rattling noises, explosions, gunfire, people screaming. The gunfire continues, and you see from the perspective of the person who is having this memory that they are running, running towards this danger. 
to the figure, to this, this girl, to your daughter, ostensibly. Running through the halls, bathed in this red light. And then you see them, masked men, clad in black, guns raised. And then you see her, lying on the floor, very still. And there is a scream of agony like you've never heard come out of someone's mouth before. And the scene is gone and you're all back in the memory lab and you all take two points of stress. Oh, you asked for it, Sarah. I am. I did. And guess what, friendos? Right? I'm zero right there with resolve. you. I've got zero on everything. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so sorry, Julie. <laughs> actually, I would say, Julie, because you're unconscious and broken, you probably didn't even like see that. Okay, and she's actually not even in the room, too. She's just uh, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll take those two points back. You take those. Yeah, put them back. Let's put them back. All right. So what happens so when advantages. a replicant is broken by stress? Oh dear. Let's. There's a table for this. I know there is. It says critical stress effects. Oh, yeah, no. there it is. But that's, um, yeah, stress effect. Uh, you roll a d6. But there's a six plus. Like, how would you roll higher than a if, six? I think it's it's to do with the, um, I think the amount of, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know six plus. I would, I would say look at it. Unless I get Roll one base die corresponding to your empathy rating. Oh my gosh. What's your empathy, oh, I'm, Fennel? I'm, I'm, I'm super fucked, you guys. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I have an A in empathy. Oh my god. I have to roll a d12. Okay, well. Oh boy, guys. Let's let's see how Fennel goes off the rails. It's going to be fun. Is it time for tears in the rain? <coughs> it may be. Okay, I only got a four. I only got a four. Oh no, Ben, you got a two? I got a, he's I got he's a out the hallway. Did he see anything? Oh. I would say I guess yeah. that he's is the all the way out in the hallway. Yeah, I'd say because, would he have seen it? He's all the way out. Yeah, because a it's a big old separated. the hologram takes the whole room up, so you probably would see it. Yeah, but I'm in the hallway. You said I was slumped on the ground. Oh, that's a good point. Make him make an observation roll, and hopefully you don't get it. Okay. There you go. Bad observation roll. Oh, go for a bad observation roll. <laughs> I have. I and have you don't have to push it if you don't want to. <laughs> oh no! Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I push it in the wrong direction? No. <laughs> it's too late. I saw it all. And I got a nine, so there okay. we go. Oh, Christ. I like that you can't push to fail. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Actually, yours is kind of, the, the nine is kind of cool. I actually got, I got fucking lucky, yo. Okay, so let's talk about what your critical stress effect was, Fena. You got a four, which yes. is, you. we're physical. You perform some act of physical self-harm. Apologies for triggers yep. on self-harm. It yep. won't be lethal, but it will typically inflict one point of damage. If this makes you broken, roll a d6 crit die on the appropriate table. So tell us what happens here, Fennet. Hopefully with not, you know, intense... No, uh, I'm not I'm not going to go crazy graphic. I was trying to decide what she would do having seen that. Eek. And I think that seeing that her synapses go into overload and she clenches <coughs> her fists so hard that her immaculately manicured nails dig into the palms of her hands. Nice. And blood starts dripping down her hands from the floor and she takes one point of damage, but she is still in the game, y'all. Alrighty. Versus Percival, who like saw from that slumped position on the floor, your, your eyes go wide as you look at this horrendous situation, especially considering, Percival, that this is the memory of the girl from your own memories. So it's like a memoryception in a way. Um, so you got a nine, and according to this table, the stress pushes you forward to perform an extraordinary feat. You gain a bonus action that you can perform immediately breaking the initiative order. You gain an advantage to the roll after the action. See result number two above. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to run to Olsen and try to do a medical aid on Olsen. Great idea. Nice. 
You run over to her. Sorry, I didn't mean to move your oh. token. Oh, just, I just <laughs> didn't right. want you to like stand on her head or anything like that. Never mind. Here, there we that, go. Give me that medical I've aid. Done there. You have advantage. Click your advantage button. Yeah, first. click the advantage button. Yeah. There we go. Oh my God! It's no, that was wrong. Two of them. It's got the wrong dice on there. Are you sure? Medical aid is D6, D12, and D6. Is it, but a B should be a D8. Oh, you've got to unclick it, change it to something else, and then change it back to B. That happens sometimes. <coughs> oh, and okay. your character sheet? There we yeah. go. Alright, do you want me to do that again? Yes, please. There you go. That's yes, better. nice. An 8 and a 10. Alright, so that's three successes. Critical medical aid doesn't really do anything more than a normal medical aid would in this case. Um, so you revive her from broken. Um, no, I thought he was stabilizing, stabilizing. her wounds to make death saves. Oh, okay, fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair, fair. Okay, so she's still unconscious. No more death saves. Okay. But she's busted up real bad. And then you said scene number two? Which is time to die. I'll read it to you since he just got pulled off. Uh, number two is time to die. You lose the will to live and simply collapse on the ground. You just can't force yourself to do anything at all, even to the point of putting your own life in jeopardy due to your inaction. So you are essentially unconscious. You are, you are Roy Batty on the roof. You're, no, you're just sitting there in abject despair. Oh, yeah. Man. Oof. So the two of you are in the hallway just looking at each other like... Like, you saved her a life, and then after doing so, you just sort of, like, sit down next to her. As the, uh, the blood is dripping down Fena's hands, she's gonna look up to see what reaction, if any, Leia had to that memory. She is absolutely on the verge of psychopathy. She's Leia. gonna make, yeah, she's gonna make an empathy roll on her own. Okay. First of all, I would say that that, that drops her two points of, of resolve. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. So, let's see. She only had two points of resolve. <laughs> oh, there we go. I get If I get her to just slump down and do nothing, I win. Let's see. Oh, wait, what was her empathy roll? Let me check, let me check what her empathy is. Oh, yeah. Uh, her empathy is a D. So, yeah, she got a four. Okay. Which is... Oh, she's Damn it, she got what I got. She yeah. hurts herself for one point, but she's still in the game. So, yeah, she just, like, scratches her face. Like, as you're just, like, nails into your own palms, she's just like... Aah! You just, like, see, like, these marks go straight down her face from her own nails. And just blood in rivulets coming down her own head. And now she's going to make an empathy roll. Which is a D6. Actually, no. You can't make a straight empathy roll, can you? You used to, you used to roll the... You used to type it yourself. Mm. Manually roll. Yeah. Um, okay. That is still a failure. It was a, it was okay. a long shot in hell anyway. Yeah. Was the girl in the image Sarah? You didn't see her. Oh, you couldn't see her? No, but you heard her voice. It sounded like her, though. So, we're at the top of the it. order, though. We're at the top yeah. of the order. Okay. Percival, okay, Percival had his thing. Um, He's out of commission for this fight. Olsen, you are not broken, but you are essentially just barely able to well, conceive of the world around you at this point. She's broken, she's just not critical anymore. Correct. But I think even when you're broken, like, you're not unconscious. You're just, True, like, yeah, you're just, you just barely, can't really do anything. Exactly, exactly. So if you don't mind Olsen and Percival, apologies, but I'm going to have to sort of skip your turns in this. Oh, fine. <laughs> Listen, you killed enough people in the last session to, like, make up for this kind True, of shit. True, you did, in fact. Killed, killed like, four guys. <laughs> She's having Dead some flashbacks Olsen. right now, so... Oh, man, fine. is she ever. We're going to talk about those flashbacks. Oh, come back. yeah. Um, let's go to, um, yeah, let's just go to, um, um, uh, Novak. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try and grapple her. It's not a great hand to hand, okay. but Fen is there, and it's better than trying to shoot near my, my friend and get a crit fail, considering how great we're rolling tonight. I mean, it is mm -hmm. what it is. <sighs> uh, actually, how are you doing on health, Fenna? Oh, I'm fine. I'm only down one point. I'm gonna spend the turn aiming. I'm gonna aim for her knees. Okay. I'm gonna line up a sideways shot so that <coughs> it doesn't even remotely hit my partner. And just make sure that this it's incapacitated for questioning. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the turn aiming. Okay. Um over to you, Fenna, and then it's Leia's turn. Alright, I am going to position myself directly in front of Leia. I am gonna pull her hands gently away from her face. I let the I let my gun hang by the strap from my shoulder again. I gently pull her hands away from her face. And I say, it's not real. It's not real. I need you to understand. Leia, we are real. You are real, I am real, but that memory is a lie and it's being used to control you. Don't let it. Make a manipulation roll, but make it with disadvantage, please. Alright. Two successes. Very nice. She says, Fine. And I'm still taking Sarah with me. Lilith can keep her fucking life. But get out of my way. I can't let you do that. I want to help you, and this is not the way. She shakes her head. Are you holding on to her? I have her wrists, yeah. yeah. I was holding them gently, but my hand, my grip firms up a little bit as she tries to get past me. Okay. Um, so you have the rifle strung, slung around your your body. It's, it's, yeah, it's over my shoulder. Cool. She grabs for the rifle as a bonus action. Okay. And then she aims it at you. Well, she doesn't aim it. She just fires it. Right she can't you. aim, she can't no. aim it at me. It's on a strap. Like, yeah, no, no, she just grabs it, between us. turns it, and shoots it at you. She can't. It's, like, literally hanging from a strap over my shoulder, and my hands are on hers. I don't think there's enough room to get a whole rifle around in between our bodies. Okay, then she'll take... Together. That's fine. No, that's, that's fine. She'll just do a hand-to-hand -to, -hand to use the rifle to okay. throw you with it. There we go. That's that probably I better. Accept. Rather than shooting, she'll just throw you with it. Um, so is that a force or is that a hand-to-hand? -hand? Let me think about this. Probably hand-to-hand. -hand. I thought it was hand-to-hand. -hand. Is there any opposition in hand-to-hand -hand in this? Mm. I think there is. I think you both roll hand-to-hand. -hand. Sure, yeah. let's try it. Go ahead, you roll hand-to-hand. I think that's how it works. I mean, mine is terrible. I'm not going to roll. No, it's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> One success. She's going to push Ooh. it. Ah. Okay. Uh, she does not. She does not succeed. She got three out of three. But that is not not enough, surprisingly. But the dice tell a story, and I'm going to follow them to the end. I think that she and I are kind of wrestling over the yeah, rifle now. Yeah, I like point. it. Yeah. yeah, she's wrestling with you with the rifle. That's her turn. Sarah runs for the door. Lilith's like, no! And Sarah's just like, you're, you're a bad woman! You're an awful person! She understands what's happening and she like hides like just behind, just behind Novak. She just hides right there. Lilith runs at her. What do you do, Novak? You're aiming for, uh, sorry, you're aiming for, for Leia. Does this count as the start of my next turn? I just want to let you, I want to let me, let me know what it is that you want to do. Do you want to cancel your aim? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm just going to say, cover your ears, kid. And I'm going to turn on the Sonic. 
and I'm gonna just try and disable more than this member. I okay. want some of this unit intact, but if we have to scramble some of it, I'm gonna. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I have to, and that cancels the advantage. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. Success. Okay. All right. Roll that damage. One damage. One damage. So this sort of intense shriek and then a pop sound, like you've gone underwater, all of your ears pop at the same time, um, and she takes one point of sonic damage. So that was your turn. Yep. No problem. If that cancels the aim, that's the turn. It does. Yep. trying to think about this. Should I do this or not? No, I won't. <laughs> Come on, we're doing a great year. You and me. Do it. No, I won't. That's wrong. It's just wrong of me as a GM to do it. So I won't. It's fine. Okay. Besides which, I have a, I'm a, I have a cold. <laughs> so. <laughs> it would mess up my voice. Oh, Alright. So, so in hand-to-hand, -hand, yes. uh, you make opposing rolls, and the person that rolls the successes. best does damage, even if it's the defender. Oh, snap. Oh. So I would have done hand-to-hand -hand damage, yep. which yes. is... One. Where am I? My one success? It's one if you're unarmed. If you're trying to hit her with the rifle, it would be two. Nice. Okay, that, it's two because we would have been struggling over the rifle. Cool beans. Alright. Uh, is it my turn then? Um, I think so, yeah. Or was that... Okay. Yeah, it would be your um, turn. Shit. I I don't want to kill her. I do not want to kill her. I just want to take her down. I am I'm gonna lean like still like with my hands on the rifle. I'm gonna like once again stare Leia down and say, "Look at that little girl. She's terrified, and you did that. That was you. Do you want her?" to live her life as messed up as you feel right now because that's what you're doing to that little girl. Stop. Make a manipulation roll, but make it with disadvantage because you guys are still in combat with one another. Yep, that's fair. I will push. What do you say to I'm from like, I sort of yank on the gun to really get her eyes on mine and say... <laughs> You were hurt by these people. She doesn't have to be. Don't let them make you do this to her. Damn it! No successes. Do I have to tell the story? At least not another point of stress. That's true. At least I don't have to lose my mind again. You guys are all screaming at each other like, Synthetics gone wild. Or Replicants gone wild. Sorry. <coughs> this channel just get better and better. You know? You do. End of turn. I'm trying to play to my strengths here. No, no, it's like good. It's good. We love this. <laughs> the strength playing is good. I mean, you guys have shot her up out the wazoo, and I mean, Feta doesn't want to hurt her. She just wants to help her. I know, but I know sometimes people can't be helped. Mm. But I love the fact that you're playing to your humanity. I'm definitely going to give you all humanity points. Hopefully, you can use them. The question is. Who's human in this respect? Mm -hmm. Is it Lilith? Or is it Leia? Oh, don't get me wrong. Fena is going to have words with Lilith because that memory was fucking evil. But right now she's just trying to keep everybody alive and that little girl on this planet. Bonus action is to pick up an item, right? Good question. I think so. I think uh, if you have an enemy at engaged range, though, something bad happens. Okay. I think you're right. I think that's basically okay. like an opportunity attack if you pick up an item. Something like that. Let me see. Bum, 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 Don't count towards move. actions move, but can only perform on your turn. Uh, uh, where is... Where did you find that? Free actions under actions and moves. You can cover... 
dropping to the ground, taking cover, standing up, <coughs> shouting a few words. Those are free. Picking up an object is not on that. Uh, Picking up an item within arm's reach. So it depends on whether he's going for something specific. Yeah, I mean, you guys shot the I, gun. I, I, I heard Matt's. Yeah, I, I heard There's Matt's something. request is she wants to pick up the gun, but not on not unless it's on her turn. You pick up. Oh, it's a free attack. You pick up something from the ground with an active and standing enemy at engaged range. So I would get a free attack if she picked something up. She's going for the gun. Okay. Time well. Oh, she's going for the gun that we're both still holding. No, no, no. The gun that you shot out of her hand. The blaster. Oh, okay. That's. That's her leave. That that would be her leaving my engaged range then, because the blaster he shot out of her hand is back in the office, isn't it? No. It's... Yeah. Didn't I knock that out of her hand? It was right here. Yeah, he knocked out of her hand back in the. Where is it? Oh, I thought she was all the way back here when he shot it out of her hand, because she yeah, was right I... over Olsen. I uh... thought I shot that when it was Olsen. She was standing right next to Olsen. It was right after she mm -hmm. shot and broke Olsen that he shot the gun out of her hand. Okay, then never mind then. Then... Yeah. All right, then if that's the case, then she will not do that. Apologies, I thought that I thought it was right here. Um... I mean, keep fighting me for my right. Yeah, I mean that's basically it. That's all I can do at this point. So, uh, an opposed hand to hand. Again. Yeah. One success. Three success. Oh yeah, she gets it, and I take damage. Um, can you do something instead of damage? Because I think what I did with with hand to hand previously was I threw. Uh, probably. Because I think I uh, threw Percival instead of having him take me... damage. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Close combat. She could grapple me and we'd both fall to the ground. Special attacks, you knock or pull a weapon or other object away from your opponent. Your opponent falls prone or you pin me in a tank. So she can just take the gun and I don't take damage. Oh. Okay. You knock or pull a weapon or other object away from your opponent. So it sounds like it would be just like she just put, she plants her foot on your chest and just grabs the ender rifle and yanks yeah. it out of your grasp. So I'm still standing and I don't get hurt, but she now has my ender rifle. She sure does, yes. Okay. So that's her turn. That's bad. That is bad. And she doesn't look like she was, like, if she wanted to, she could have aimed it at you. Like, she looks like she's about to swing it towards, towards Lilith. Mm-hmm. That's her turn, though. Novak, it's yours. All right. <sighs> she hasn't gotten the gun up yet. Nope, she's moving it towards Lilith. Can I shoot in a downwards direction towards her hands and That's try an and aim. shoot the gun? No, same. <sighs> Is the kid still have her ears covered? She's whimpering nice. in the corner. Gunfire, yeah, great. Um... I don't want to kill her. <sighs> well, if I grapple her, you can cover. <sighs> or vice versa, if you grapple her, I can cover. I mean, my grapple shit, but let's try She's it. Fine. <laughs> I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and tackle her before the rifle gets up. Alrighty. <coughs> hand to hand. Opposed hand to hand. Yep. Yarp. Success, hey, one. one. Also one. Okay. So that's a wash. Okay. Yep. Nothing happens. You jump at her Take and she just wash. sort of like, you just sort of bound off of each other. Yep. She is, she, for, you know, for, yeah. for a lady, she's a hardcore. Oh, she is. I think she's combat trained. I think if I remember from looking at her thing recently. Yeah. I mean, um, she's a Blade Runner, just like you. Yeah. Uh, if that's my turn, then I'm, <coughs> I'm going to try and grapple her. I'm going to try and pin her down. Okay. That's another hub post hand to hand. God damn it. I'm going to push that. Go ahead. Oh, man. Do I need to even roll? Negative. I don't think so. I mean, it might be a wash. She might fail. That's true. She probably won't, but I think I got lucky that first time. Yep, she succeeds. So I fail, and I take a point of damage, because... 
She just sort of swats you away. I assume I take a point of damage. Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she, well, she hits you with her hand. She doesn't hit you with a rifle. Yeah. In grappling, it doesn't say that you take damage. Uh, it's an opposed... Oh, you went for... Oh, so you didn't try to swat her, right? No, I was trying to grapple her. Then I think yeah. that your grapple fails. Okay, grapple fails. Yeah, no, I'm done. with All one right, success. Cool. So no damage. I'm down for that. As I'm just... And it's like the whole time, I'm just... I'm still just pleading with her. Like, you don't have to do this. Yeah, the only action she can take is to try to break away. How much damage I, does the ender rifle do? I actually... Uh, that's a good question. I look at... I think it does, too. I look at Lilith and I say, if you could pull up a happy memory, maybe that would help. Uh, yeah, it does two damage. Two damage, D10 and piercing. D D10, D10 crit die piercing, yeah. All right, give me one second. Let me just add that to her sheet. Oh, boy. Not 21. Two! Yeah. D10 piercing. And it's medium long or short long or what is it? Medium, uh, medium long, I believe. Okay. Yeah, medium long. Okay. Yeah, she shoots the left. And she pushes it. Ooh. Of course she does. <laughs> and it misses, and then. Oh, that's bad. That's. Wait. Is that right? Yeah, that's one success. Oh really? That one hasn't shown up on my screen yet. It's, yeah, I for some reason the pushes the, the pushes show only on my screen. So that's two damage. Oh weird. Oh man, how much health does Lilith have? Good question. I was about to wonder that. I'm gonna find out. She has five health, so she's down to three. Okay. Is she shooting from the ground or did she get up to shoot at Lilith? She um, wasn't on the ground because yeah. my grapple failed. Yeah. Well, when when the two of you grapple, you both fall to the ground only and the if only I succeed. Yeah. I well, failed. No, 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 it's still a post. You both fall to the ground because you're wrestling with each other, and the winner either gets a hold or the other breaks away. Oh, okay. But they're oh, still on the ground. So if she stands up to take the shot at Lilith, she, um, um, That's right. Novak gets an opportunity attack. Page 68. I thought that, oh, okay, I'm on page 68. I, I didn't, I thought that meant that, like, if you grapple as the attack, you both fall to the ground if you succeed. I'm glad we're, we're okay. hashing all this stuff out now. Okay. That's cool. All right. Novak, do you want to take your opportunity attack? And how? Yeah. I'm going to... Mm. Can I try and grapple the gun out of her hands? You can make a special attack and try and knock it out of her hands, yeah, to take it away I'd from like her. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This would be after the shot, though. Yeah, can't help that. Hand to hand it is. Success. Do I do an opposed, though, I wonder? Uh, yes. Okay. It's still an opposed hand to hand. Okay. I think all hand to hand rolls are opposed. Should I push it then? Yes. Try and, uh... Oh, I was going to say yes. You Fuck. should push it right before Matt said that. <laughs> So nothing happens. I mean, you'll, push it, yeah. you'll push and then she'll push. But yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. it'll yeah. work. So it sounds like well, nothing happens. Let's try it. Okay. Go for it. Can I can I try and push it? Even which though one, push which, it yeah, you can push however many you want. How many how many of these dice do you want to push? Both of them? One of them? I'm gonna push the D ten, which was the non success. Yeah, oh no, sorry, that was yours. Uh, I'm going to push the D8, which was a non-success. All right. Nice. So oh, two. Very nice. So, no, that was on the D8. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, it's D8, 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 Yep. Yep. So she's going to do the same. Yep. Now, I don't know why my push has come through on the GM mode only. I don't know why. It's strange. Weird. Uh, shit, that's exactly the same. Two push, <laughs> two push successes, a seven and a seven. Still a wash. Sorry, dude. All right. That's all right. Black. Okay. She sees you coming at her. She sees you grabbing at the rifle. She's like, get out of my way! And she's attempting to just push you off of uh, of her gun. You're not part of this! 
And Lil is like grabbing for her shoulder. She's like, <gasps> God, no, please. Sarah's just like whimpering in the corner. So let's see, whose turn is it now? It's my turn. Okay. How long does Perse does Percy stay out of this? Is it the Until entire rest of the combat or yeah. how long? Unless somebody orders him out of being mentally broken. Yeah. He's just sitting there Which... like... You know what? Let's do this. Just because we want to have you guys interact that, somehow. Saying, Percival, at... what are you... Like, you, your focus is gone. You're, you are no longer here. Where are you? Oh, I'm, I'm sure he's back in the building watching the building collapse on Leia. Oh, Jesus. Olsen, you're barely conscious. Where are you? My mind's a bit fragmented. She's keeps going between happy memories and of dancing around with Hayden and then to crawling half conscious in the snow, bleeding, not even sure how she's conscious <coughs> and to have scenes in a hospital trying to recover and then back again and intermixed in between and laughter and giggles and then screams and thunder and lightning and smells of sterile hospital and then back to the smell of blood and then honeysuckle and everything is just kind of flashing in between all the different memories. Benna is going to actually realizing that no matter how hard she's trying to get through to Leia, it's probably not going to work. Uh, and seeing Olsen and Percival on the floor back there, she's going to call through the door to Percy. Percy. Percy, I know it was horrible, but I need you. We need you. We need you and Olsen. I need you to snap out of it, buddy. Come on. I know you can do it. You're better than this. You're better than the trauma that she gave you, she says, looking uh, with some disdain at Lilith. And uh, I'm going to make a manipulation roll to try to snap him out of it. If I succeed, he will get resolve equal to the number of successes I roll. Two. Nice. That was my, that's an action in combat. So that was my action Super. snapping him out of that. Very nice. And if possible, I would like to interpose myself between Leia and Lilith. Okay. Gonna, like, mm, not a whole lot. Lilith. I don't think there's a whole lot of room. I'm gonna be not quite, well, we're not really on a grid. I couldn't tell. No, so. I know. It's like, you can't sort of squeeze yourself in there though. I would say you can okay, like, get, you can get maybe to her side or something like that. All right, well, you just put me under her. Sorry. Just... No, no, this is a, this is a 2D map. This is the top down. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, quiet you. There we go. There we go. Alright. Change the music up a little bit. Here we go. Uh and I do like I just I put a hand on Leia's shoulder. Like I know that I can't say or do or roll anything, but I just like I put a hand on her shoulder like I'm pleading with her to please stop. Okay. And I do glance over at um Lilith and say Maybe a happy memory will undo some of this damage? I don't know. I'm spitballing here. <laughs> Lilith doesn't find the humor in that, I unfortunately. I wasn't actually... I know. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't think that she has that comprehension. She's just socially inept. Well, no, I said I wasn't trying to be funny. I was actually oh, I know. trying to go get her find a happy fucking memory. But there maybe isn't one. <laughs> that might be the... Best case scenario. Ooh. Again, I'm going to ask you, who's really the human here? I told you guys at the very beginning of our little escapade into Blade Runner that it would make you question what it means to be human. Not only as characters, but as players. 
And again, I'm going to sort of bring that back. I'm not saying that you need to go to all meta and shit. But who's really the victim here? Agree. Absolute agree. Tara. Mm hmm. She puts. Her, it's now her turn. It's Leia's turn. She puts the gun up against Lilith's head and she says, You want her to live? I get it. I'll fire. Unless I get. And she points at Sarah. Let me go. Let me get out of this hellhole of a planet. You don't have to come with me if you don't want. But I swear to God, I'll pull my goddamn trigger finger if you don't let me go with my daughter. Why don't you ask Sarah what she wants? Make a manipulation roll without disadvantage. Just a straight manipulation roll. Oh shit, I just realized I've been rolling other things with disadvantage. Oh no! I should I should have rolled Percy's regular. I rolled it with disadvantage by accident, but wow. he still got two back, so whatever. Three success. Very nice. She says to Sarah, who's currently in a humongous state of d distress, she's like, Sarah, darling, don't you want to come with mommy? And the girl, like, takes her fingers away from her eyes, and her just hands are just absolutely shivering. And I'm going to have a contested... Um, actually, no, because Sarah doesn't have any stats, unfortunately. So I'm just going to have a straight manipulation roll. She says, You want this bad woman to go away, don't you? She caused us so much pain. So she's going to make a manipulation roll, which she's not very good at. But let's see. I feel like you should be disadvantaged since she's not actually her mother, but maybe who knows? Who that's knows? true. Maybe that's what Matt's hinting at. That's Maybe a very a strong possibility. Who knows? Right. Is she a replicant? Manipulation roll incoming. No successes. She's like, Sarah. And her voice gets a, a certain amount of strain in it. We can go away from this awful place together. Come on, Sarah. Uh, and that's total failure. Sarah says, no! Just go away from me! And Leia loses it. And she fires her gun. There's no way to push the gun. There's no way to... Nope, it's Leia's turn. It's Leia's turn. Okay. She gets, okay. She's special. She gets to manipulate and shoot. She does. She gets to manipulate okay. and shoot. She's not it's a character. The boss. It's the boss fight. I'm not... It is the boss it's fight. armor, yeah. It's, it's, it's armor, a lyric. Boss fight. <laughs> Lots of things. Plus, there's a very good, there's a very strong chance that I'm cutting out the last section of this whole thing for this particular uh, section. Really? <laughs> Matt's tired of talking to us. I am. My voice hurts. <laughs> I'm ending this early. I am. No, I'm not going to end this early. I'm going to end it. When I have I'm altered ending, the module. I, see, I do not alter it any further. further. No, I am. Oh, look, I'm <laughs> making some mod, uh, modifications, but I think to to the benefit of, of of this particular story that you're telling. All right, so she shoots. Oh my God. Oof. Oh. I think I didn't even roll it off of the gun too, which is stupid. That was my bad. So let me just adjust. I'm just gonna fire the the rifle at point blank. Okay, but it was it was four, so I'll just roll the critical because it was three. Three additional. Yeah, three successes additional successes. Occurred. Holy fuck! Oh, she is very dead. Oh my god. She is soup's dead. Bye bye Lilith Tyrell. Fucking traumatized. Oh for sure. We are nothing if not our memories. Hmm. Um Lilith Tyrell's brains hit the back wall. I told you guys this was a brutal game. I was gonna say I don't. I, it doesn't matter. 
I, I got thoughts. I, I know got you got thoughts. You got thoughts. I got thoughts. We all got thoughts. Gonna <coughs> look at Leia eerily calmly. Like from like she's kind of slowly turns from decimated Lilith to Leia cocks her head to the side and says Did it make you feel better? She doesn't respond. She looks at the little girl who she has offered some form of motherhood to who is recoiling from her. And then she looks over at the form of Lilith Tyrell dead on the floor. And then she drops the gun and with her movement walks away around um, stop her go ahead <laughs> yeah I need to stop we need her I need I, I was to gonna say away. no someone has to answer she for just this. walks Someone's she just arrested. walks away she, I'm gonna ha- I'm yeah. gonna no I'm gonna no, grab I'm her go- I'm I was gonna, gonna say I'm gonna, gonna, take I'm your gonna turns. Try to take your turn I am also gonna try to grab her as she walks away from me uh push oh balls you grab her she throws you off oh sorry I can't push her so let me try and push uh, mine Fena, did not turn. work. Nothing? No, I think I accidentally pushed yours. Oh, I know. I'm saying I just rolled mine. I did not get it. Oh, on my push. no. Ooh, That's you fuck. Some stress there, Novak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much? One point. Two. Oh, no. It's for each one. It's for each double one. Yeah. Oh, shit. So two uh, stresses. Zero. You're at zero stress? Oh, no. Zero resolve? Unless I let, until I can light my cigarette up at end of shift, I'm. That's that's a broken nope. by resolve. So roll yeah. roll a d six. Roll empathy. Well, what what's your empathy? Yeah, what is your empathy? D eight. So roll a d eight. I've got critical stress here. We're human. Seven. Uh, you get the shakes, bad ones. You can continue to function, but with a disadvantage to all skill rolls, and no rolls can be pushed. Fine, fine, fine. That's Chinatown, Jake. <laughs> That's Chinatown, Jake. As she's walking, I call out. I'm like, Percy, stop her. Percy, you're finally r- revived from grogginess. You can stand Percy. up and stop her if you want. She's walking out the door without Sarah. Oh yeah, Percy shakes it off, sees her walking past him, and uh, tries to grapple her. Okay, so this is an opposed hand to hand, yeah? Mm-hmm. I didn't even let them oppose. Well, you didn't have to, we oh, yeah. failed miserably. That's true. Yeah. But I didn't do damage to you, so it's fine. Maybe it's the blood splatter in our eyes. Oh, well, God. when you're trying to grapple, there's no, we determine there's no damage when you fail. You that's fail. true, that's true. Here we go. Oh dear. Oh. oh, Christ. She just throws you off like a ragdoll. Okay. God damn it. She just walks out the door. Chase after. Well, it's not your turn Chase. yet. Well, yeah. She says, just stay there. I'm leaving. You won't see me again. At least we know where she's going. Um... As she walks out, Fen is going to run over to Sarah. And sort of like kneel down and turn her away from the sight of Lilith. Ugh. And just kind of like try to very calmingly be like, it's okay. I mean, well, no, you know that's a lie. It's not okay. It's very, very terrible. But you're okay, little one. You're going to be fine. And just kind of like, pulls her in and is stroking her hair. Cool. Um, let us do this. Is anybody stopping Leia from leaving? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You guys go. I'm with the little girl and keeping an eye on Olsen. Okay. Um, you will have disadvantage, Novak, because you've got the shakes real bad. So everything, yep. just hit that disadvantage button. It's on there. 
I All need right. you to move me through the doors, though. Oh, yeah, I can't get through the door. Damn doors always killing me. The bane right. of the adventure. So let's. I'm let's taking a quick bio break while they chase. Okay, so you guys will chase her. I feel bad because Olsen's just lying lying there on the ground. I'm gonna try to get her up in a minute and see if I can help. Okay. Uh man. She's she picks up on the way out though, she picks up her blaster. Because she she did yeah. on the way out. I'm just letting you know. I, I snatch mine off the floor as I chase after her. Okay. Fair. Let's just go with Novak Percival Um Leia. Novak Percival Leia, Novak Percival Leia. <sighs> Sniper shot. Okay. Aim right in the back. The legs. Oh, aim for the well. Aim is aim is a one at disadvantage. Okay, so that wasn't aimed. It's supposed to be. Oh yeah. Sorry. If am I allowed to aim or no? You can aim, but then we'll negate that. Again. We'll we'll negate that in that next. We'll we'll negate that shot. Great. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fine. I'll I'll do normal roll. None. Okay. Yeah. So just no aim, yeah. one damage. Yeah. Cool. Or uh, one hit. Didn't actually roll the damage yet. Oh, okay, roll the damage. Two. Cool. Um, yeah, she takes a shot in the shoulder. She, she starts limping. She's looking real messed up. But she doesn't even fire back. Oh, it's Terminator time now. Yeah. I'm just going to look at Percival and nod. All right, Percival's taking a shot. Because they're executing her, it sounds like. And a critical. This is what Blade Runners do. Well, maybe they're just... Do replicants get broken, or do replicants just die when they hit zero? No, they know. get broken just like everybody else. Okay, well, there you go. If they break her, then maybe... So Novak, you boom, you shoot her on the shoulder. <clears throat> she just staggers forward. And then Percival, just Died. like... Yeah. Just like in, in Blade Runner with Harrison Ford, you just hear that inimitable sound of, um, hold on, I've got it. And uh, I think you're going to do the, uh, the honors here of, and she just staggers <laughs> slow-mo down the hallway. Tell us how you end Leia. Oh, he puts one right through the spine, right through the heart, blows the front of her chest out. Jesus. And here I thought we were gonna medical aid her and take her into custody. I know, I guess not. Well, these you guys are you guys are Percival Percival's no joke, right? He, he the whole time he was like, I'm a nerd, I like computers. Meanwhile, like you give him a gun and he's like, Boom. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna skip all the uh, the broken stuff since she's not resisting. Her life has ended as she knows it anyway. You've done her a service. Yeah, four is four is so much damage. <sighs> so she's dead. Hearing that from the hallway, Fena kind of flinches because this is not at all how she wanted this to end, and she's gonna usher Sarah into the office. If you could move her for me and just kind of put her over here, like out of line of sight, like behind the desk, say, I want you to sit right there while I help my friend, okay? Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be right back. And I'm going to go, uh, my role is not great, but I'm going to go try to administer medical aid to, uh, why did my... My your name just left Olsen directly Baker. out of my brain. Olson. I'm like, I wanted to say Novak, and that was wrong. Uh, I'm gonna push it. Fuck it. And uh, I fail. Christ. And I now have to break myself with. Oh hand. no! <laughs> Roll a d8, I think, because you have the. No, uh... it's a d12. Oh god! So like, you're trying to like oh. bring her back to life, and eleven. My turn. Uh, that I get to do one more feat, so I'm and gonna then, try to medical aid her with advantage, yes. and then sit You're there. Like, live, damn it, live! Bam, bam! You're slamming her on the chest. Oh fuck! Motherfucker! That was with advantage wow. too. And then after that, you just sort of a day. sit back and up against the then, desk. Yeah. And then I just kind of, 
I'm going to say I sort of slump back over here and put my arm around Sarah and then just stare. Ugh. That actually kind of tracks for how this went. I feel like that's accurate. Everything went sideways so fast, guys. Novak is going to turn. Is Terry still in the office? Terry is down the hall. His knee has been shot. And his glasses are all askew, broken like this. And he's got like, he's got a huge, like, bloody bruise over his right eye. I'm going to walk down the hall after double checking that Percival did the deed. And, and I'm going to walk on up to, to Terry. I'm going to help him up and be like, <sighs> So if you've got any video in this office for security purposes, we're going to need a copy of that because obviously this was not ideal for anybody. And um, Terry's over here, by the way. Yeah, I'm. I'm not even sure what to say to you, my man. This is this is a lot. Oh, still doored. Weird. Damn doors. One second. Put me free. Oh, yeah. You want to talk to him? <laughs> um. <laughs> Novak has reholstered his gun and is just. He looks. He looks like it's been five days without sleep. He looks fucked. And, and he's just going to be like, I am I'm so sorry that it went down this way. And, and we tried we tried to converse with people. We tried to figure things out in as amenable a solution as possible without putting anybody in cuffs. And, and you just witnessed all of it. So we're gonna we're gonna need footage so that you and no worries, no worries. Yes, Sarah of course, of course, officer. Properly protected. Yes, and we will do everything in the power of the LAPD to make sure that you are taken care of in the situation. That I'm sure she did not have any plans for an event like this to happen. No, no. My deepest, uh, my deepest apologies. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Ah. And then he's gonna walk back to his team. Okay. And he's gonna light up a cigarette inside. All right, okay. that'll bring us some resolve. Yep, one. Percival's gonna call for uh, an ambulance. Dispatch and the, and the coroner. Oh my god! Yeah, you call dispatch. Um, dispatch the the joy uh, AI unit picks up. Hello, this is dispatch. How can I help you? This is Percival. We have an officer down. And we have another individual who needs medical aid. Your situation is understood. Help is on the way. Thank you, Joy. And then I'm going to go back to Olsen and see if there's anything else I can do for her. She's, like, her eyes are open. And she's, like, muttering something about... What are you muttering something about, Olsen? Like, what, what is it that you're, that you're saying through, through cracked lips blood sort of coming through your teeth. Sorry. No worries. You're not even sure if they're real words. It sounds more like a toddler who hasn't figured out how to form words, words yet. You hear a few things like Hayden and and just and the general, and just and names of the names of the mountains, and La Besar, and it's you're hearing these weird. You're not even sure what these places are. She's saying or words. You're are those words? You're not really sure. Mm. But the only thing that's really tangible, she does say Hayden multiple times. So I'd say probably within five, ten minutes, the doors to the Lilith Tyrell memory lab are thrown aside to usher forth a number of LAPD officers. Um, accompanying them 
are, at least as they filter into the doors, four or five people, at least you assume they're people because they have helmets on, and they're wearing Spec Ops military gear, black flak or body armor. And they look just like the ones, like the people who ambushed you in the street. Gosh. They're holding their ender rifles. They're just standing inside the doorway. LAPD look at them like, what the fuck? You guys okay? Like the, the, the a couple of, of, of uh, Blade Runners or LAPD cops coming, running inside. One of them immediately runs over to Olsen and, it, and administers a medical aid. Let's just give you an, a point of health there, Olsen, so you can come back to life. And then, like, walks over to Fenna, like, snaps in front of Fenna's face. Oh, shit. She's out. Can I walk over to Fenna? Yeah. I'm gonna walk over to Fenna and crouch. To I assume you're still down with the kid, right? Yep. I'm just staring. Like, I've got my arm around her, but I'm not really looking at her or interacting with her. I'm just kind of staring directly into space where I could, like, sort of, like, at the door where I can see some of Lilith's blood yeah. on the floor. Just staring. I'm going to get partly in your sight line and I'm going to look at you. I'm going to say, You know what's going to have to happen. Are you going to be good for that? Can I roll a manipulation on her? I don't think she can really hear you until you, no, you can, can get her up. Well, he can manipulate. He's trying to manipulate me out of my. Uh -huh. I got gotcha, you. He's trying gotcha. to restore resolve. Go ahead and roll it. Oof, push. I think you rolled that at, I think you, oh, are you still at disadvantage? I think you're still, you're still, yeah, he's still at disadvantage because of his shaky. But he got his, he got resolved back. Does that happen? As soon as you get resolved back, you, you, you come out of it? I assume so, yeah. I mean, yeah. it just says you light up once per shift to heal a point of stress, so. <coughs> but I think that once you are no longer broken, you're no longer suffering your that broken effect. That makes sense. That's Otherwise, sense. he did the shakes for Yeah, exactly. You'd have the shakes for an entire shift. Shall I try once more without disadvantage? Yes, do it without disadvantage. Okay, that's enough. Thank you, Mother. I get one point back, yay. Something. And I kind of... You see Fenna kind of blink a few times and shake her head and look up at you and just go... Yeah. Yeah, I'll be good. You can stay with the kid for a minute if you want to. We'll figure that out when we have to get to it. Yeah. Uh, did you grab my jacket? It's in the yeah. uh, lab. While I'm over there, I'm, I'm walking past and I'm going to go check on Olsen as well. Olsen's being attended to by a um, police medical officer. Um, they're putting her on a, on a stretcher and wheeling her out since she can't locomote on her own. Like we're gonna get her. We gotta get her to, to medical. She's she's looking I'm gonna real bad. Put a hand on Olson's shoulder on top of the gurney, real quick, and just say, "See you in a little while for debriefing. Get some rest." Yeah, who needs rest? She turns oh. her head to the side and spits at the floor. The blood just goes. Yeah. <laughs> I you drink when you're out of bed. Sounds good. They just wheel her out to the medical spinner. That's outside. Um, Go back to the central core lab, pick up the jacket. Yeah. When he brings it back, I wrap it around Sarah. Um, Percival, what do you want to do here? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to follow her out to the spinner. Okay. 
Um, as the two of you exit Lilith Memory Lab, um, you see several different spinners. You see a medical spinner, and you see a black spinner, military grade. You see several different members of that group of helmeted soldiers standing outside of it. Do they have any license plates? Unmarked. But I'd like you both to make observation rolls as you as you look at it. Nice. Which two? He and I, or those two? You both see the same thing. So you look into the uh, the spinner. Oh, sorry. I thought you. I thought I. I was okay. with them, right? Uh, I don't know. Did you go outside? I thought you were with Sarah. Oh, I thought we were all leaving at this point. I mean, you Sorry. can. If you're all leaving at the same point, then I'll give you all observation rolls. That's fine. I feel like we were, I, I mean, I thought we were all kind of getting up and going. I was taking that's fine. Yeah. The if that's the case. That it comes down to the police station. That's <laughs> Am I at disadvantage? <laughs> uh, does it, does your injury state, state as much? I don't know. I don't no. know. Then no. No. I don't think it, it affects, like you got shot in the hand, you got shot in the gut. Didn't say anything about your eyes. So let's just move you outside. Oh, oops. Rolled that twice. Wow. Rolled it twice by accident and got the same thing, basically. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. It's meant to be. to be worse. Yeah. So those of you who got successes, which looks like it's everybody, you all yeah. see in the tinted glass of the spinner. Well... Then she just does this. And the spinner closes its door and takes off into the sky. As she does take off, you do see that she's heading east. And the bright rays of the sun are beginning to peek out over the mountains of the wild expanse known as the Kipple, What do you do, if anything, about what's happening, perhaps at this very moment, if anything? Do you let it all play out? Do you get involved? What do you do? The, um, they were supposed to meet at the Hollywood sign, wasn't it? Correct. Mm-hmm. You guys want to go to the Hollywood sign and figure out what's going on? Olsen's, Olsen is is completely... Oh. I'm just letting 10%. you know. Like The answer could be yeah. yes, right? It doesn't have to be all of you. But Olsen is... No offense, Julie. Olsen's oh. fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's been there before, and she's a little pissed off. Mm, I, can, I can see that. Yeah. Dang it. Now she's got two holes in her favorite jacket. She's not happy. And I'm not going to suggest <laughs> any, any course uh, of action. But noting that, number one, a lot of you have been messed up. Number two, if you take another shift, you will incur another point of stress because you haven't had except downtime. For me. Except for Novak. I don't want to break for the third time, so I am going to look over at Percy and say, I'd love to, but I'm due for a shower. And a baseline. Sounds good. Percival, are you due for a baseline? Uh, actually, I'm back up. Yeah, but I'm, you um, hit had, zero. You were broken, I did, I did. so yes, oh, you yeah. are due for a baseline. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Novak, question for yeah. Matt. <laughs> yes, Novak? Uh... When do baselines have to be applied? Immediately. Alright. Novak knows that. Yeah. Uh, I also, I'm wondering because it doesn't count as downtime. Are we allowed to rest first? Or are we going to take a baseline that's going to cause us to incur another point of stress and then have to take another baseline because it's going to break me again? No, no, no. You, you go back in for a baseline. You have one point of stress. 
and the baseline takes an entire shift and doesn't count as downtime which means i will then break again as soon as it is over correct but i would say that that doesn't make a lot of sense mechanically that wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So I would say Which that you're allowed. I, like, I don't think it would take. I know first. it's allowed to take a. Sh yeah, I feel like you would probably be able to rest for a shift and then take it in. Take it in the yeah, daytime. Yeah, like I can't. I can't do any more police work. No, exactly. But I can go home and sleep mm -hmm. and regain a point of resolve. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like Holden probably calls you on your KIAs and says, mm -hmm. "You guys are fucked. Go for a baseline first thing tomorrow morning." There you go. Is there? <laughs> is baseline something Novak would have to do because he's part of the squad? No, baselines are for replicants. But I mean, it, applying them to the replicants. he administered on the, the team baseline. As one of the human partners on the team. No, that's the great okay. thing about being Blade Runners. Um, okay. You don't give baseline tests to your partners. Okay. Because how could you discern if you were giving preferential Fair. treatment? Yeah, they're given by they're given by experts who determine how far off the baseline they are based on their responses on their baseline tests. Novak is going to light up another cigarette and sit on the hood of the car as everybody gets into the squad cars and heads back to the station. Okay. So the sun rises it is now the morning shift do you guys take your downtimes yes yes no no i'm not going to no. <laughs> <laughs> yes julie power through it yeah <laughs> ah! power through your punctured she's like lung. she like pulls off all these like she's like that scene in et she just like pulls off all the shit and she's like no no i can't let him go I don't care if you knock me out for the surgery, but I don't want any of that other weird shit. No pain meds. Mm -hmm. She tries to say that, but she, they're like, yeah. All, okay, it all just comes out as like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've probably already been given a sedative by the EMT who, who yeah. patched you up. Totally fair. Meanwhile, the nurse is hitting the button. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> pain ah, medication. there we go. Um... So, here we go. Let's see if I can bring us back. Okay. Nov go ahead, Novak. I was just saying, Novak's just going to drive to the Hollywood sign at a safe distance, smoke cigarettes the entire shift, watch from a distance, observe and learn about it, and rethink everything he's ever known about replicants. It's kind of a lot. Yeah. I'm going to ask you that after all the evidence that you've gathered... Those of you who can present your evidence to Holden, what do you decide is the final case file sort of conclusion to all of this? It is a... It's a wild conjecture. What Fena privately thinks, especially considering the uh, ambush by the guys in the black armor who we later saw surrounding Quell, that when she went in for reprogramming, Leah's memories were manipulated to cause her to target Lilith Tyrell on behalf of, but without realizing it was on behalf of the Wallace Corporation. So you're implicating Wallace Corp. Uh, this is what she privately thinks. I gotcha. What she privately thinks is that Wallace had a bone to pick with Lilith Tyrell, probably because she's a Tyrell. Maybe for reasons that we can't even fathom. Corporate espionage, corporate espionage is above her pay grade. But that when she went in for reprogramming after failing a baseline, they saw an opportunity. They manipulated her memories so that she would target 
Lilith and either kill her or kidnap her child or both. Publicly, what she would be willing to report is that the Lilith Corporation's use of... You mean the Wallace Corporation? Sorry, no. The, the Lilith... The Lilith the Lilith Memory Corp's use of Hyrule. emotional trauma. I think she means the, me the Lilith Memory Lab. Sorry, I want to be clear. Sarah. Sorry, sorry, I said Corp. Yeah, sorry. Lilith Memory Lab. No worries, no worries. The, the Lilith Memory Lab's usage of traumatic memories to manipulate Nexus 9 synthetics behavior via essentially emotional punishment backfired when one of their units responded violently to the induction of a traumatic memory and that for the safety of the public this practice should be reevaluated um Novak, do you have anything that you want to say other than that? I think the the footage of us trying to de-escalate in Lilith, Corp, uh, Lilith Labs is testament to the fact that privately he also thinks there's a whole bunch of corporate espionage bullshit. But that there's no fucking proof of it. And so he'll word it as eloquently as something is wrong and that is enough to prevent the Nexus 9s from being released as planned. And that further investigation must be concluded but it is outside the jurisdiction of the police force. Aren't we Nexus 9s? Aren't I a Nexus 9? You are. Oh, is it Nexus 10? There is no is Nexus it is? 10. It's the Nexus 9 rollout to the rest of the world. Oh, the world. rollout. Yeah. So I think... Uh, I think that for the case of reevaluations require more <sighs> It's very hard for Novak to not be personal during this shit. And that personnel is is supposed to be kept out of the reports. I, I think he's going to find a way to say that something about reintegration or assessment is not solvable with one test. And that the examples of non-police force units, I mean, as, as far as this case goes, right, his first <laughs> sort of research with this model, the, a full corporation rollout is not the same as the soft rollout that's happened with the police force. Police force units are not behaving as multiple standard units outside of the LAPD are behaving. And that, while BK tests are operating seemingly within normal standards, both the person that was brought in under my jurisdiction last night into the jail cell, and now this unit plus at least one unit at the snake pit, if they are not under a certain strict regimen of supervision and VK test, Novak is also going to say absolutely not to casual rollouts, and that it, you know what? This is what you're planning to say, like as you guys are like taking your downtime, you're 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 sleeping, whatever it is, and you're like writing up your report because you're going to be asked this in the morning by I'm Holden. yeah, I'm doing it up. I'm going to spend a promotion point to try and really, like, bang out the most professionally worded the police force units have operated perfectly fine. Every example in the last 72 hours, under the pressure of a recorded incident visit by us to Quell, that nothing must go wrong, has definitely proven that there are things going wrong. And it is a strong recommendation that the police force is 100% against it, keeps it in their VK tests, and m must report to higher-up authorities that this is not cool. This is not ready to launch. This is not a good thing. Okay. 
and he'll spend the promotion point knowing that it's probably going to get him booted again. But that <laughs> if he doesn't say it, mm -hmm. and Lilith died for nothing, and Sarah just gets thrown into the orphans, the uh, foster system, and that is that is that is worth not getting the right pension that he's been looking for. He'd rather he'd rather get the booted shitty pension he's been on for the last couple of years since the last screw up, than let this go by without saying a word. He's he's got his own issues with all of this. I think that's good. I think that's good. I understand. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna burn the promotion point on that. Okay. Works for me. Try and get it through. Um, Percival, what do you disclose or not disclose about what you've learned during this case? I think when uh, they have a uh, Nexus 9 that, that fails a baseline and they, they send them in for an overhaul. I think that the police need somebody there to make sure they're being overhauled properly and not reprogrammed like this one was. Because it's obvious that when this went in for a reprogramming, somebody messed with it and threw things in there that shouldn't be in there. So they they need police oversight to make sure that at least the police models aren't messed with. Okay. Anything else? No. Olsen, although you're in the hospital, slowly recovering, you still get a, a zap on your KIA asking you to corroborate all the evidence. Asking you if you have any other inputs for the case. She responds in as few words as possible. Do you corroborate Fena's testimony? Yes. Hit Novak's? Yes. Percival's? Yes. Any other additions? No. Amazing. <laughs> Literally just yes, 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 no. <laughs> like... Yes, next line. Not, not even punctuation of any kind. Just sh 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 send. Like, why, 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 and <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, Literally, that's it, and she resists the temptation to throw it against the wall. No doubt. I would, I would probably understand if you, if you did anyway. Um, so yeah, you take your, take your downtime. It is now the day shift of the of the third day, um, and yeah, you, Fena, and you, Percival, are called in for your baseline test. Now, we didn't get to do this during the actual case, but I want to do it now. <laughs> Sarah and Ben, I sent you guys scripts for your baseline mm -hmm. tests. Oh, I got it ready. I've had it up and ready to go for every session. Let's see how well <laughs> this fucking works. Hold on for one second. Let me just make sure... This does, in fact, come into play. Yes. Okay. So you guys head into the room. There is a, a little sort of um, uh, a little thing on the wall there. Um, let me see if I can bring up the, the actual image of this of this item here. Yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna have this replace me um, on screen. Boop. So now you've got the baseline test. Uh, those of you who in, tw uh, in Twitch or in a video can can see this. It's basically just a vertical slit and like a camera. Um, and it just uh, issues forth this like hum. Um, and I guess Percival, you're first. Then you wait outside. All right. So you hear a voice behind the wall, essentially, or perhaps coming through the speaker. Um, and it says... Officer Percival JL27.80. Let's begin. Ready? Yes. Recite your baseline. Every night, the dream's always the same. Can't escape these walls of dark decay. Feel me drowning underneath the waves. Dreams. Dreams. Do you remember your dreams? Dreams. When you dream, do you see people you know? Dreams. Uh, are they happy with you? Dreams. Dr Dreams. What's it like to love someone you can never meet? Dreams. Dreams. Escape. 
Escape. Have you ever been in a place you hated? Escape. Escape. Did the walls feel like they were closing in? Escape. Escape. Are you happy with the way things are? Escape. Escape. Do you think you can make a difference? Escape. Escape. Decay. Decay. What's it like to walk in a graveyard? Decay. Decay. Did you ever leave any flowers? Decay. Decay. Did you pick them up yourself? Decay. Decay. Have you ever left someone behind? Decay. Decay. Underneath the waves. Underneath the waves. Have you ever seen the ocean? Underneath the waves. Underneath the waves. Did she teach you how to swim? Underneath the waves. Underneath the waves. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Underneath the waves. Underneath the waves. Thank you, officer. Thank you. Exit the room. Percival, as you exit the room, you see Fenna sort of staring at you. Put a hand on her shoulder. You've got this. I know. She stands up and goes in. Okay. Right. See if we can make this work. You're Are ready? you supposed to make us repeat the last phrase three times? Oh, that's only if you fail. Oh, okay. And I'm judging by your voice. Whether oh, you're not fail. making us roll for it. Okay. Nope. I don't do it like that. I judge by the way ah, you want it to happen. Interesting. Okay. Because we're at the end, right? So there's no real physical. All right, fair. There's no real way to, to make this anyway, uh, you know, okay. change the, the, the outcome here. Okay, here we go. Uh, Officer Fenna, uh, FN9 2 3 9. Let's begin. Ready? Yes. State your baseline. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Diminishes. Diminishes. Is your constitution waning? Diminishes. Diminishes. Have you, have you ever lost love? Diminishes. Diminishes. Do you feel like you're no longer involved? Involved. Where do you go when you're alone? Involved. Involved. Death diminishes me. Death diminishes me. Never. Never. Do you want a child? Never. Never. Do you yearn for their laugh? Never. Never. No. No. How does it feel to never know? No. Do you feel like a grain of sand in a vast sea? No. No. Tolls. Tolls. Can you handle the job and its toll? Toll. Is your ear still ringing from the bell? Toll? Toll. It tolls for thee. It tolls for thee. Thank you, officer. Stands up, brushes off her slacks, and walks out. I knew I'd blow my fucking voice up. <laughs> um, rats, guys, who passed your baseline tests, you're... Promotion you're, points for us! You do Yay. get promotion points. Yay. So, here's what happens um, as you come out of your baseline tests. Novak you're able to catch the um the newspaper uh, as it comes out the next morning it says trouble in the kipple and as you read you see that there were several altercations in the outlying hills of the Kipple by the old Hollywood sign, as an undesignated craft of some kind was forced to make a crash landing not a mile from the Hollywood sign after being, after experiencing a mechanical failure. All aboard were killed. You recognize some names of the uh, members of the passengers of this um, of this vehicle, and I think all four of you see this report as it comes out. You see some passengers' names that, unfortunately, you recognize one being Styles. Uh, 
um, Percival, you recognize one, unfortunately. And that is the name Mirren. Beyond that, no other information is known other than a terrible accident in the Hollywood Hills. All the information, however, that you give to Holden and to your superiors about what occurred, they take into account. And perhaps two or three days later, um, another news report, of course, comes out. Um, this one basically stating that the incident at Lilith Memory Corporation was an attack by um, a terrorist group. An uncredited terrorist group. And you know, of course, that Wallace is behind this. They've taken the situation and they've buried it. Just because reports of even a single rogue Nexus 9 replicant is just too dangerous to get out. The story, of course, in Kill Magazine that came out during your investigation is quickly discredited. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, few people take Kill Magazine seriously anyway. And after you deliver your information to your superiors and see this report, I'm not sure if you even go back to Holden. It's up to you. I call Rada's number and leave her another message. And it just says, Hey, it's me. I don't know if I fucked up or not. This is a real mm -hmm. shit show. I miss you. That's all it says. Olsen, a few days later in the hospital, you get a visit. Um, you get a visit from uh, someone who you're happy to see, at least, in the, in the flesh for the first time in a very long time. Um, you see Hayden. And he's... He's got, like, a bunch of flowers... <laughs> He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, clearly. He's like, I heard you were here. Oh, man, you're all messed up. A single tear rolls down her cheek. And this is not normal for her. Normally she just kind of tucks it away, doesn't let anything out. And she just doesn't even say anything. She just motions for him to come over. He does. She just tries. To, she's kind of having a hard time moving. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she just motions for him to come closer and basically giving him permission to give her a hug, but she can't actually really do anything about it. Like, yeah. He tenderly but she's not that. really able to talk either. Not but, much. Yeah. He gives Emotions. You sort of a gentle embrace and then steps back. He says, I'm just going to put these right here. He puts the flowers on the side. Because they're, I mean, best I could get. Synthetic and all, but, you know. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um. Um, I'm going to come back to see you tomorrow. Is that all right? Yeah, you can come back. 
you don't you don't have to go right now if you don't want to. His face I don't mind the company. Brightens up a bit and he sits down in a chair, sitting across from you. I should have called you the other day. I'm sorry. Things <laughs> fun things happened. He doesn't Not laugh. fun. He doesn't laugh. He just sort of says, Yeah, I mean I understand. Kind of shakes her head. So, it, uh, no, it's fine. You don't have to say anything anymore. Just maybe when this is all said and done, you, you and I can, I don't know, get a drink. I'd like that. Okay. Percival scene shifts to you. You're in the RIT lab working next to Coco. Obviously the word about Mirren dying in that horrible car wreck. You're not quite sure if it's hit Coco very hard because Coco's always been very sort of emotionless. Sometimes you wonder if he's a replicant. Well, anything you do specifically? He's probably going to bury himself in lab work. They probably, you know... Coco, how are you doing? I'm fine, Percival. How are you? I'm alright. How are you doing with uh, Mirren's death? Um, it was a great tragedy. She was an extremely hard worker. I'll probably, uh, pet the cat and then go back to work. <laughs> Amazing. And Novak, I guess we see you, uh, where we first met you. Um, in the, uh, in the street. Having a bowl of noodles. Um, as the rain continues outside. Yeah? I think he's probably ordered some sort of sake to go with it and is just... deflated. <laughs> he's... He's tried to move past his... frustrations regarding the... the replicant terrorist attacks on the Tyro building all those years ago that got him screwed up and and now another one genuinely tried to like okay I can spot him but treat him like people there's there's new technology things are different people are people they they had a reason to blow something up try empathy and trying empathy nearly got an entire squad killed because he didn't shoot first and it's Fucked him up in a very different way. It is... Humbling and frustrating to try something different and be better. And to have everything go worse. But because of how this entire scenario blew down... They're not going to execute him. They're just going to shuffle him off to a corner... And let him die quietly. And that's not tears in the rain, but it is sake in the rain and some noodles. And he's probably going to take a nice long walk, and the last thing you're going to see is puffing up that long coat, putting a cigarette in his mouth. And if I may, as the credits start to roll, just stroll off into the rain. Love it. As the credits uh, begin to roll, as Novak strolls off into the rain, we see... A quote, and it's actually a quote from uh, Robin Wright's character from Blade Runner 2049, which will proceed this by seven, no, sorry, 12 years. So this is 12 years in the future is when she says this, but it still holds true, I think, even then and even now. Um, and 
even in our modern day, which is this. The quote is, The world is built in a wall that separates kind. Tell either side there's no wall. You've bought a war or a slaughter. Think about that one, folks. As we end the final chapter of Electric Dreams. What'd you think, folks? It was good. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> what a oh. brutal fucking fight, though. Mm, yeah. Oh, was... those dice were not <laughs> having it. Up. They were not <sighs> having it today. I was trying so hard. I know you were, so and I can tell. I can tell. Oh, uh, it's almost impossible to get her to not do what she is. And I'm, you know, you take it from the perspective of someone who is absolutely 100%, not even the slightest inkling of doubt, convinced, based on her mm -hmm. memory, mm -hmm. flawed as they are, that this girl is her daughter. Yeah. And the only thing that ever really could convince her was what happened with that child. And when you are like that, it's up. Your time's up. You don't care anymore. I did ask the right question. Sure did. It took me, took me a while. Yeah. That question was rough. I was like, oh shit, she's asking that one. Okay, this is the, this is the memory. This is the memory that Lilith lied about. This is it. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting too because when you've when you've got a case like this and there are so many fun directions and splitting us off and having the whole f I think the first three or four shifts there were so many directions it could go and as it whittled down the part of me that is used to some of the detective novels and 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 genre sort of <coughs> twists coming my brain was looking for extra layers to it but then when you think about the movies mm -hmm. There's and no. the essence of where the stories actually are, it's just, it's very simplistic and straightforward. It is, it is the one thing. And, and that motivator is such a potent mm -hmm. character development. It's such a potent reason for a B BBEG fight to happen when yeah. it's well written. Absolutely. It's, it's so interesting to look at this module and go, could we have done it differently? Were we missing a clue? But it, it, it also, like, it feels so fucking noir. The answer is just like, no, it right. had to nope. go this way. No, it's, no this, was, it, this is where it was always going, which is actually what I said to Patrick in our little private everywhere. chat. Everywhere. <laughs> my yeah. brain is everywhere right now, and I love it. This, this module is modular in a lot of different ways, in that if you didn't show up in time at the Lilith Memory Lab, she would have already killed Lilith and taken Sarah, mm -hmm. which would have ended up being another encounter at the Hollywood Hills. So we saved a little girl from a little bit more trauma. Sure did. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Like, it's funny. It's like with the memory thing, uh, Fena never liked Lilith in any respect. And it's like when you kept like pushing the humanity thing and I'm like, no, she wants her alive because she has answers to big questions. That's the main, like, that's, that's, like, she wants everyone alive, A, because she just wants everyone alive, mm -hmm. but B, both of them had answers that we couldn't get if they were dead. No, totally. Yeah. And more than anything, she really wanted to, like, she honestly really wanted to understand this whole, like, the idea of implanting replicants with traumatic memories to, to punish them with emotional trauma when they disobey. That's messed like, up. Like, she found completely completely like once she finally figured out that that was how they were being used just so abhorrent like she 100 percent thought lilith was a monster but still needed her alive to get answers to her questions absolutely how about you ben julie i like I, the depth uh, of the characters yes. and the the little interactions all the little nuances and the fact that you could go so many different directions and it's felt authentic to the movies and to the original stories. 
I'd be interested to see a playthrough with completely different characters, people rather playing these characters and see where right. they went with them because they would be, even though they are pre gens, they're so open oh, so that many. there are so many different ways they could have gone. Yeah. I think about the different ways I could have played Olsen. Like, there's so many different ways I could have played this character. Which parts of the character are you going to reach and lean towards? Which parts in the sheet, in the key memories and relationships are you going mm -hmm. to grab a hold of? Which parts are going to be important to you? I mean, there's parts on there that I never delved into. And, I don't know you if know. it's me as a player or if it's just that Free League makes amazing games. But I find myself, like, every pre-gen that I have ever played from one of their modules, I have found myself super attached to. Which, yeah, very juicy. Yeah, like, and I, I, I don't know if that's just the genre of the games. I don't know if that's just who I am. And I tend to just dive into my character's full throttle. But I... Like, I love Fena. I want to keep playing her. She's so Thank boring. you, yes. Be I, have, I have some news. I, am... I have some yeah. news since you guys all survived. Nobody died. <laughs> Percival, uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, or I should say Ben. We're no, we're, we're no longer in character, Fosa. Ben, <laughs> uh, what, did you, uh, what did you like? What did you think could be better? Honestly, I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, truthfully, I, I thought every inch of this was amazing. Like, I don't, I wouldn't have changed anything. Everything I thought went absolutely perfect. Um, uh, when I was when I got all the the stuff from you know after the Kickstarter and I got my books and I started making characters, like you know obviously this is not my normal kind of character. You know I, I usually I the first thing I wanted to make was an enforcer, but I saw uh, I saw the, the the tech guy and I was like I I want to make one of those. I don't even really know why. You know it's just it's so opposite and different. I want to figure out how to play it and you know and see where it goes you know and then you know probably go right back to playing enforcers or something you know something else but it was i wanted the the chance to play somebody like percival and i'm really glad it turned out this way i enjoyed it and uh, I, th I think i know what you were saying about the characters like i played other pre-generated characters whether uh you know, I was at Gen Con and, and a player made him for his own little campaign that he ran there or or uh, even a game. Somebody at the game company made a pre-gen character and they usually feel kind of half-assed. But all the characters in this were so well thought up, so well fleshed out. I, I It was great. Mm -hmm. Free League is awesome. Mm. Hell yeah. They really are. And um, I 100% would have chosen the Doxy for myself. So the fact that that's who Matt gave me made me incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I got, as soon as I started reading the character sheet, I was like, oh my God, this is like the character I would have made. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah. the four of you. You guys were amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better group, honestly. Um, so as I was going to say, this may not be the last chance to see these folks. Why? Because this, ladies and gentlemen, the Electric Dreams scenario, or case file, is the first installment in a longer campaign that has yet to be published, but will be very soon, brought to you by our friends at Freely, called The Immortal Yay! Game. Ooh. The Immortal Game. It's a campaign arc that will be published by Free League sometime in the near future. So in the meantime, this will give Olsen time yeah. to recover in the yes, hospital. Yes, she's got months to recover. So let's give her some time to take it back to... And I now have promotion points that mm -hmm. I can spend. I started the game with one, and I'm like, God, if I hit zero, bad things happen. That's so... true. But all the things that I wanted to happen, happened. You guys all got into like some several, like you got to do a chase, you got to do a couple fights, you got through some really great character development. Um, you guys did fun stuff together, you did fun stuff by yourselves, you used your skills, you interacted with, with great characters, you made very strong choices. You know, you can't ask for anything more. So, kudos to you. That's, uh, mm. that's all I have to say, folks. Uh, it's time to wrap up. What do you say? 
Absolutely. Cool. Thank you much. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, go with our, our ending quote here. Um, yeah. Let's start over here. Um, uh, that is... Well, actually, it's up, up here to the top right. That is Patrick who played Novak. Patrick, where can people find you on the internet? As always, you can find me online at patrickmarin.com for any of my theatrical and Slices and Dices related endeavors, as well as Slices, Dices, and Cast Party, where I both am a player and occasionally a DM, uh, bringing you some fun new games, playtesting stuff like this, brand new systems, so excited, maybe some new stuff coming this year, who knows? Uh, also, you are more than able to find me for whiskey tastings in a very different corner of Nerddom and Elocution uh, at barrover.com. Thank you so much, Patrick. Awesome. Uh, directly under Patrick, this man down to the bottom right, uh, that is Ben. Ben, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on the Slices and Dice and Discord, and uh, hopefully soon in the next campaign when it comes out. And um, you can find me on TikTok, making stupid videos, painting minis, making fun of my kids, <laughs> stuff like that. Life. Fantastic. Um, over here, down. No, sorry, that's I'm I'm, I'm mirrored. Uh, it is over here. Yes, that is Sarah. Sarah, who who played Fena. Uh, Sarah, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on the interwebs at Lovely Llama on Instagram, where I post nothing, uh, and Reddit with two L's and Lovely, where I spend all my time. Uh, you can also find me here on Slices and Dices most Fridays and every other Thursday. Alternate Thursdays, you can find me on Mates of Fate playing Songs of Creation. Also, you can find me over on Cast Party, where I will be DMing an all-women's public game in August. So if we've got any female players out there who want to come play a free game with a bunch of gals, haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but I think whatever it is, it's going to be wacky because I usually tend towards the dark, creepy, and macabre, and I feel like switching it up a little bit. So I might do something ridiculous. I'm kind of contemplating Here Be Goblins. Oh, so, that's fun. That's fun. That's yeah, fun. thinking about it, because just it seems like it would be a riot. And I want to give a bunch of women a chance to go be murder hobos, because why not? Why not? Uh, <laughs> and yeah, that. Oh, and on our Discord, <laughs> where I try to be active. My activity is like a sine wave. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm there, then I disappear again. No problem. Thank you, Sarah. And then finally up here, top left, that's Julie. Julie, where can people find you on the internet? Um, not super active on social media. Sorry, guys. I am on Discord. Love chatting with everybody there. I did actually make a TikTok for the first time in a really long time the other day inspired by Blade Runner, posted that on Discord. So if you're interested in seeing whatever that is, because I don't remember what my name is on TikTok, just get on Discord, you'll find it there. I'm Dritzed on Discord, so. Love it. Um, one of these days you got to show me how to do those like cool ass characters in your name, because when I first saw them, I'm like, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> it's crazy. There's an app for that. <laughs> oh, there's an app for that. There's an app for everything. Um, I just looked down at my desk. There are so many Ricola wrappers on my desk. <laughs> There's like ten Ricola wrappers on my desk right now. Uh oh. I have I have made it to the other side, just barely. <laughs> you can tell during the during the baseline test, I was like, it. I could fall over right now. Like just the, just just poke me with a stick. I'm done. Um, but uh, uh hey, it worked out. Um, I'm Matt. Uh, I hope to do stuff on this channel and uh, bring together awesome people like the four people around me. And you can catch us here on Slices and Dices every Thursday and many Fridays um, in the foreseeable future. Uh, looks like from an events perspective, uh, we have coming in the near future, obviously we just did Blade Runner, um, Sarah and I are playing Songs of Creation this coming Wednesday. Uh, and then Thursday, Alien RPG, The Frontier War, which could also very well be the finale of that campaign. Mm, I thought you were going to say continued. <laughs> I mean, maybe. We'll see how this all works out. Because there's a... The, you guys are like at the very fucking tail end of that mission, so we'll see. Oof. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but then right after that, uh, Raven Love Demands of Dread comes back on the 26th. And then other things coming, you know, in June. We got Call of Thulu coming back, Star Wars, etc., etc., etc. More and more 
cool ass stuff coming down the pike. So without further ado, folks, Fuchs, without further ado, folks, it's hard to talk when you have a Ricola in your mouth like all the time. <laughs> Made a little pouch in my in my cheek for it. Uh, didn't work out too well. I'm gonna go ahead and say goodnight. Uh, remember, folks, uh, it's too bad she won't live. <laughs> but then again, who does? Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>